Now, this is a very important episode of We Hate Movies. This is some emergency programming. Let's get right into it. It's Batman v Superman, colon, Dawn of Justice. My God, I'm winded. I'm Andrew Jupin. Steven Sadak. Eric Siska. And We Hate Movies. Hello, everyone. Welcome to We Hate Movies on the Sideshow Network. Thank you for tuning in to what is an emergency broadcast. <laughs> this is this is no joke. We are fresh from the theater. Well, we stopped off to get a bite to eat. <laughs> but we're sort of fresh from the theater, having seen Batman v Superman, colon, Dawn of Justice, from 2016, directed by cinematic criminal Zack Snyder. Ap- apologies to 10-year pur- purists. Apologies to... Listener request month purist. Listener yes. request month will be finished next week. That's correct. You right. will get the Dungeons and Dragons episode next week, but we had to get in here. We had to try to to try to write what once went wrong and possibly prevent some people well, well, from spending hard earned money. Now I will say it's okay to like a movie because I know I could see I could see the kids coming out. Sure. Coming out of their houses right now. With the pitchforks and the knives. And uh, well, you know, I, I would I usually agree with you, Eric. I think it's not okay to like this movie. I think that <laughs> there is a, a, a moral obligation to not like this movie. We need to rally in the streets. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> just before we get into it, I think we should just say, spoiler alert on the whole movie. Yeah, um, we're talking about it. If there's right. there's going to be no vague uh, conversation here. We're talking about this movie. So, yeah, if you give a shit about it, go see it first and then come back and listen. Or maybe a better idea... Don't give a shit <laughs> and uh, just listen to the show. Listen and you know, listen to the We Hate Movies version of Batman v Superman: Colin Dawn of Justice. Huh. <sighs> okay. Where to begin? Honestly, where to begin? And I think Steve, to your point about you know, this is like you know, it's a uh, it's a bastardization of all you hold dear. Like if you're a fan of these characters, it's a this ain't your mama's Batman v Superman in the worst possible way. It's, this ain't your mama's what you used to like. You know what I mean? Like I actually, no, I'm a DC guy. I, I you know I, I like all comic books, but more through and through, always like DC comics better. I've you know I love the old Superman movies or some of them. I love the old Batman movies or some of them. I love you know and I, I love all that stuff. Yeah, but I and I, I tried to remain neutral. The like I. I gave this movie so many chances. The reviews came out on Friday. They were terrible. And I was like, oh, that sounds exactly like I don't, what I don't want to see. And right. then, like, we watched 20 minutes of this movie. I'm like, maybe it's... And then it just falls off a real big cliff. A big, a big, big, big cliff. And, you, yeah, you know, and I saw some chatter, too, you know, online that was like, you're just going into it wanting to hate it. It's like, no, man, listen, I love Superman. I love Batman. I wanted this to be something. But it is quite clearly not anything. It's not right. anything for no one. <laughs> well, let's talk about some of the good things first. Then. Sure. Like, yeah, 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 yeah. Like, I honestly, I was surprised. I actually liked uh, Ben Affleck in, in, as Bruce Wayne. Big and time. Batman and Jeremy Irons, I thought, did a fine job. Yeah. I Like, I the whole movie, I'm like, I just want to see that movie. Like, yeah. let's make a movie with them. Do it. Here's the thing. Do it with a classy villain. Get a Riddler in there. Sure. Some dude doing a nice classy Riddler or like a not gross Oswald Cobblepot maybe. <laughs> and you got yourself a classy a, ass Batman. Movie. An Oswald Cobblepot you'd be okay to take home to mom kind of a thing. Yeah, exactly. Not one that's just munching fish in the back of a taxi. <laughs> yeah, like somebody with a large nose with a penchant for birds. Sure. Why yeah. not? Yeah. Uh, actually, yeah, Large Nose uh, would be like a classy actor. Dude, cast Adrian Brody. <laughs> oh, yeah, and he gains like 600 pounds for the role. <laughs> sure, he'd do it. I would love to see a fat Adrian Brody. <laughs> <laughs> for that alone. Like, uh, Affleck, is, he's good as Bruce Wayne. They do, like you've seen from the trailers, it's mm-hmm. an older Bruce Wayne. I think they make some th- remark that he's... He's been Batman for, is it 20 years? 20 years? Is that what they do? 20 on years here, Bruce. But that's what's bizarre. I don't know what year this movie is supposed to take place in because you see on the Wayne's headstones that they were murdered in this world of the movie in 1981. 
Oh, wow. Okay. I didn't, I didn't notice that. Yeah. And it's, you know, because heaven forbid we get a Batman movie without seeing the murder of his parents. <laughs> it's literally the first thing you see in this movie. Like, can't you just start the movie as him as Batman and just not address it? We all, we, anyone, Everybody knows. Everyone I don't, knows. I don't need to see the Waynes die ever again. I don't need to see Uncle Ben die in those Spider-Man movies. I just no. don't. I, I know what happens. Yep. Just understand that you've made this movie 14 times and just yeah. cut that piece out. Also, like, look at look at how the comics do it. Like, you'll pick up a random comic. It's not going to... Each single one is not going to have <laughs> the Waynes be murdered or... Previously Uncle on Batman. Yeah. <laughs> and it's like the Pearls page. It's just a page <laughs> dedicated to her pearls going all over the place. Can we talk about those pearls for a hot second? Please. So because this is a Zack Snyder movie, everything needs to be, like, slow motion and fetishized and fuckable, right? <laughs> And so, like, even even the murder of Bruce Wayne's parents are fuckable in this movie. <laughs> it like, is. you could fuck this murder scene, and it's just like, <laughs> like you know, they're coming they're coming out of the movies this time. Yeah. They just went and saw Excalibur or something. <laughs> Why did they see Excalibur of all movies? That's a bad. I, not that's not the movie you want to go out on. No, yeah, that talking about bad last movies before you die, Stealth and Excalibur. <laughs> And Batman v Superman. I hope you make it. If you do happen to see it, I hope you make it to watch anything else before you can. Seriously. Uh, but so they're murdered outside of a movie theater. And by the way, we did have to see this in the 3D. Thanks for nothing with this 3D. <laughs> well, speaking of fuckable, you get that gun coming right in your face. Dude, it's a gun that's going to blow off right in your face. You got, like, the, the, the murderer, mm -hmm. uh, like, takes the gun and puts it, like, up under her <laughs> pearls and then yanks it after she gets shot in her pretty face. And these 3D pearls are flying at my eyeballs, man. It's the shot in the... Like, he, everybody knows Martha Wayne dies and it's a real... The, the, the Waynes get it. They always get it. It's always... You usually see Bruce's eyes go, oh, no. Yeah. Or you see, like, maybe you get a nice aerial shot. Like, the the idea that this gun has to be in her fucking face. It's like you're picturing bits of teeth flying across the street. <laughs> and it's like... You know maybe, what? Maybe Just classily kill them. It's bad enough they weren't coming from the opera or the theater. They're seeing fucking Excalibur or whatever. It was, it was John Travolta. Oh, no, I shot Martha Wayne in the face. <laughs> <laughs> Martha Wayne as played by Phil Lamar. <laughs> now, that is an interesting... That's how you yeah. diversify this cast? Yeah, that's true. <laughs> I, would, I would not mind that. That would be interesting. And Phil Lamar as Dame Martha Wayne. Another weird image we get. So Did it's you say Dame? <laughs> oh, they could. They're Gotham royalty. That's true. <laughs> the one, when we get Batman, uh, little Bruce Wayne, where he gets levitated by the bats, like what in the... the because, magic, here's the thing. Yeah. Batman and magic don't mix. And no. In this movie, you're mixing a little magic with your Batman. The beginning, when he's got the, the bats swirl around him in the classic scene when he falls down the cave, and he levitates. Because here's what that is, Like Steve. David Blaine. Well, yeah. <laughs> I did think he was about to go sit in a cube in front of a performance theater for a week. Whoa, Matt, what magic. But what it is, and it's because there's so much blink and you miss it garbage dialogue in this movie, it's, it cuts to a voiceover of Ben Affleck saying, like, and in the dream, they raise me up towards the light. Oh. So what you're seeing is like a flashback that turns into a dream, but nobody fucking knows it because this movie's terrible. <sighs> yep, big size all around. The dream stuff, like if this was just an out and out regular schmegular superheroes clobbering each other movie, uh -huh. it's a D minus. The dream sequences and flash forwards and whatever else happens oh, yeah. makes it an F minus, like in a big positive way. It is way. ridiculous. So speaking of one of those dreams, early on, Ben Affleck's like snoozing at the console, man, <laughs> in a long day of hacking, whatever. And then he has this nightmare, bro, right? And it's just like this g giant, um, like black bat pig monster that's eating him. Yeah. And he wakes up. And um, it reminded me a little bit of in the Nolan movies how he had the serum yeah. sprayed in his face that causes those types of visions. Right. And so that was like contained to a reason. I think that it's doomsday that he sees. Actually. Is that what it is? I think it, he has like a premonition, like a weird is, like. Is that just not. That, I thought that was just a regular Batman dream. Are like, we talking about when Batman's like in Afghanistan or North Africa or no, wherever no, he's no, supposed to be? No, that's a little later. That's going to. Okay. This I'm going to earmark a, that for. That's a big conversation. Yeah. No, but this is the okay. dream where he's in his, her, his mother's mausoleum and like black ooze starts pouring out of her oh, name. Oh, right, and right, right. And then a right. face jumps. It's, like it's kind of a jump so scare in the middle of a Batman movie. See, but it's a, it's a what, horror movie trope. Yeah, You're totally it's right. It's insane. And it's just this this giant monster chomping on him. And it's just, 
And I guess you're right. It is doomsday. But I thought it was just what he thought bats were. I, <laughs> what like, like gross... oh, my God, it's a big, weird bat. Never saw that kind before. Alfred, document this. It's a new bat species. <laughs> All right, Master Wayne, glug. I love alcoholic Alfred. Jeremy Irons is a lot of fun in this movie. Alcoholic, mechanic, jumpsuit, very effet Alfred. It's awesome. Jeremy Irons is awesome in this movie, and he's got jack-all shit to do. <laughs> There's nothing. Yeah. It's him. You see him tinkering with shit and then, like, talking to Ben Affleck through a radio. That's It's, it's like Metal Gear Solid. It's like, I don't know, Snake, do you want to go down there? <laughs> All right, Bruce, you're going to go right, and then you're going to find a staircase. Go down the staircase. Bruce, do you know you can archive your inventory by using the triangle button? Bruce, we need to get your XP points up now. <laughs> go over here and chop some wood for a little bit. You played Metal Gear Solid, right, Eric? Do you no, chop, not really. Do you chop uh, wood in it? No, I, I, I think just, I. Pl- I think I. What was what was the was that on PS One originally? Yeah, it was PS One originally. That's I played that game and nothing else. So no, that's, yeah, that's I couldn't I tell you. you. Well, I just always love when you died in that game and the people you were talking to were like, "No, snake!" <laughs> like every time you die. Sorry. Every time you die, they're like, "Oh no, snake! Snake! Snake!" Snake! <laughs> well, you know, they're very concerned for Snake. He's the hero. Uh, we could, I mean, and I, I, I do think that, yeah, Batman and Jeremy Irons are... Batman and Jeremy Irons, who are good friends. No, <laughs> Bruce Wayne and... Uh, Best Al- friends with the bat. <laughs> that, mm, the fact that we don't say Batman in this movie, it's this, like, new... Is no one saying Batman? Did, Did I just miss really? that? He's the bat of Gotham, man. He's oh, the right, bat. I'm the that. bat. The what bat. about the bat? Bag of farts. It's like supposedly thought, cooler, I guess. I don't know. I think this this movie title should have been Bad Man versus <laughs> Stupid Man. <laughs> Bravo. It's <laughs> but you have to airlift them out of this movie because the the what they have to say and do in this movie makes them not good. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. And well, they're not good. They're, it's not like oh man, there's this good Batman movie wrapped up in this shitty Superman movie. No, and incorrect. That's the thing is like, and I rewatched Man of Steel. Uh, two nights ago in preparation for seeing this movie today. And I, I remember when I, when I saw the movie in the theater, I was like, this is like a C minus. My wife was like, well, that's grounds for divorce because you're an idiot. <laughs> I thought I was like kind of okay with it, but I wasn't like, this is great. No. Nah, yeah. And well, I then the same, yeah. I, I rewatched it and you know, like everything, like I am an idiot. And my wife was right. Like that movie's bad. I, it, it's a bad movie because it's bastardizing Superman. Like, there's a poison in this movie world. Yeah. And it kills me watching this movie because that poison is now seeping into Batman. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And, like, let's get into it. Batman murders people in this movie. A lot of people. Just gleefully ding-dong killing people. <laughs> Excuse me, we hate movies, guys, but Michael Keaton murdered people. Not with guns, dude. Batman is straight up killing people with guns in this movie. That's and, true. and to be fair, because uh, it's, it's a point of contention for me, uh, uh, Christian Bale's Batman does kill Ra's al Ghul at the, at the end of that movie. That whole, I don't have to save you. Andrew, when I eventually cut the brakes on your car, <laughs> I'll, be go, I'll go to jail for murder because that's what... When, when I put you in a death trap that has no way out, it's not yeah. like, well, it's, hey, man, I don't got to save you. I got well, to cut the brakes on this I, train. I, some people might argue that Raz al Ghul is the one who set up that train disaster. Although, I agree with you, he should have taken him out of there and just, you know, so for, some, for everyone, prison is a bigger punishment than death necessarily. That's actually the weird part about this movie. So, uh, some of the Batman stuff you see him, like the first thing you see, and also, here's something. Why can't we just have a good old-fashioned jewel heist anymore? Whatever happened to that? The old days, you yeah. know, the penguins got... Oh, the big diamonds coming See, into Gotham. You're exactly. Right. What is, why are the stakes always 75 9-11s at once? <laughs> I mean, instead it, of just something... Or, a jewel heist? How about knocking over a nice, quaint savings and loan? <laughs> or, yeah. Or, or the microfilm. The, yeah, oh, the, oh my God, the, the microfilm that has the, the, the blueprints for the bombs. And here's what's amazing, though. You know, there is one of those in this movie. Yeah. Wonder Woman yeah. is just going after Lex Luthor because he's got a photo of her from 1914 or yeah. whatever it is. Like, And she's trying to cover up that she's Wonder Woman. That's like a classic golden age. Well, I gotta find this photo, you know. And like, <laughs> that's awesome. But meanwhile, seventy five nine eleven. <laughs> yeah, or there's sex slavery in this movie. There's like human trafficking. That's that's the first Batman mission. Because it's dark and gritty, bro. Oh, it's super bro, bro, yeah, bro. bro. We well, gotta like, get some slaves. 
these cops go into this house in Gotham, and I'm like, oh, it looks like a crack house. Maybe it's like some drug running or something. Drug running's fine. In the grand scheme of 75 9 yeah. drug running, totally fine. I'm okay with that. You walk into this basement, there's just sex prisoners, <laughs> and everyone's screaming that the devil's here, and yeah. I'm like, what the fuck? Now, now in our, in, you know, okay, you want to make an argument about the movie, we don't actually see them... Be sexed, yeah. <laughs> they, maybe, maybe it's a sweatshop. We don't know, but it's they're all female. They're all <laughs> yep. huddled and crying, crying, and nothing but con- crying. I was going to say damp, but that might be the tears. That might <laughs> no, be you're the right. Tears. They are. They are like a little bit. It's weird. There's a little like worse a, for wear. Really. It's like a leaky basement. <laughs> Again, like a jewel I think there's, there's foundation issues in this house. I spotted them. <laughs> Maybe there's going to be a kidnapping. A prized opera singer is coming into Gotham, and uh oh, the Riddler's going to going to get that guy. Yeah. Held him for ransom. Maybe. Yeah. <laughs> Sounds like the Fifth Element. <laughs> You know what? Hijack a dirigible. <laughs> Don't crash it into a building. Yeah. Just hijack it. <laughs> Maybe take it to an island. Maybe a bank or a train robbery. That'd be fun. Oh, sure. Yeah. Knock off the 815 from Gotham <laughs> to Metropolis. <laughs> and Batman. But so Batman, what he does, though, in this movie, and it's actually more. He, we will get into direct murder as well. But like he does this thing where he brands a bat on like criminals that he really hates. Yeah. And when they go to jail, that's a sign that they have to be killed. Which so he's setting I, up this bizarre yeah. mercantile system with like lifers, but I guess. how does that even work? Is it just like, why, why would someone in prison want to immediately kill a new inmate that had been sent there by Batman? They, most of them were probably <laughs> sent there yeah. by Batman. Why are the, that's what I understand. Who's the guy on the inside? Like, did Batman flip Killer Croc? <laughs> And these, oh, like, when you see these guys bite their throat out, then I need a scene of him going down there, like, um, uh, I gotta fill out this visitor's form. Uh, I want to see Killer Crap. <laughs> <laughs> I, I brought him a cake. There's no iron in it. I just need him to do a job. <laughs> I got, a, got him all these precious reptile eggs. <laughs> I don't know what he's going to do. So also at the beginning of this movie, this this is kind of a previously on Superman. Yeah. Like you see the final fucking hour long fight scene from Man of Steel. Mm-hmm. You see that from like Bruce Wayne's perspective. Right. And he's like. He lands in Metropolis and he's driving to Wayne Tower, like through all this nine eleven shit. Well, because apparently, by the way, uh, ge- geographically, like I guess it, for in New York terms, um, it, we're talking like Manhattan and Hoboken are uh, Gotham yeah. and New York, and Gotham and Metropolis, right next to each other for some unknown reason. They're I'm- sharing like a tiny bay. Like Steve, has that ever geographically geographically been accurate from the it, comics? There is some stuff. I. I, I it, it's all always kind of Springfieldy to me. Like I don't know wherever there's there's right. no accurate map of DC of the DC world. I don't know where Keystone City is. I know Coast City's all the way on the west side. I thought Keystone City was supposed to be like Kansas Kansas City. Yeah, I think it's somewhere in the middle there. Right. Well, but, there's the the great line in Batman Forever when Val Kilmer's like the circus has to be halfway to Metropolis <laughs> by now, and that's all the that's all the 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 uh, mixing I'll, I'll allow. Yes, exactly. <laughs> the the so. The, but yeah, that that first scene. So it's it's Bruce Wayne trying. Like he's like, oh my god, I gotta do something because these monsters are tearing up my, my right. uh, the the city next door. Well, and so he's driving through the streets and Jeep commercial, Jeep commercial, Jeep commercial, totally. And it's a weird like he calls some office manager at Wayne Tower and he's like, Jack, Jack. <laughs> Jack, you got to get him out of there. And then this old bastard is like, all right, you're the boss. And turns around and he's like, hey, everybody, the boss said we got to go. We can leave now. And I'm like, were they sitting around in this high rise waiting for Bruce Wayne to give the okay to evacuate? They see like a UFO glowing red outside and all the buildings next to them are doing dominoes. (laughs) And they're like, oh, well, I got these expense reports. They're due next week. You know, we've been working really hard. Lucius Fox is just sitting in front of an adding machine like, no, no, Mr. Wayne said nothing about this. (laughs) Oh, you know what it is? It's kind of like that bullshit thing that some offices do when it's like snowing and it's like, well, you know what? We're not going to close the office. If you can't come in, that's fine. But we, oh, pre- but yep. if you ca- if you can possibly make it in, try to get in. If you feel like it's unsafe for you to try, like they put it on you, man, that's horseshit. If you feel like the alien invasion outside <laughs> makes it unsafe for you to get home, or that your trains won't be running, you sh- your your 
totally free to leave, but the offices will remain open. You know what you get also? Like, as there's a shot of Bruce Wayne, like, running down a street in Metropolis, and it's like, it's the big, it's the big final set piece, and there's the big alien, whatever the shit goes on at the end of Man of Steel. And you see the Chris Maloney, Richard Schiff suicide bombing? Like, you see that helicopter I crash into it again. totally forgot either of them were in that movie. Oh, yeah, and Chris Maloney's got some horse shit line at the end where he's just like, uh, like, a brave death is a death you can be proud of or something like what that. Is he wharf? It's, he kind of <laughs> pulls a wharf at the end. He's eating a bowl full of worms. <laughs> Yeah, I, that whole sequence at the end of that movie is like Chris Maloney's fighting the the other chick from Zod's army, yeah, yeah, and yeah. then like Richard Schiff puts the little Lego piece back in the thing <laughs> and activates the who gives a shit, and then he just turns the rudder towards the spaceship and kills them all. But so this guy Jack, everyone else is leaving. Everybody Jack! else, everybody else cuts out early. Bruce Wayne has great cell reception in the middle of this disaster. <laughs> He's like, all right, Jack, are you still there? Why are you still there? Oh, Jack, Jack, I gotta go. And then, like, the building collapses, and then it's like, no, Jack! He's just yelling for Jack. <laughs> and this guy, this guy is like a little prayer, like this, like, oh, our father. Like, it's not like the our father, but it's almost that. It's just a made up one. And I was like, what, you couldn't get the fucking copyright <laughs> for the it. Lord's Prayer? <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not paying the Catholics for this shit. Not giving the Vatican one cent. <laughs> but, like, who could care? And then he pulls. Uh, this guy's legs out from under a beam because now now we're on the ground in nine eleven. Pretty in much, right. you, that's that's what you want. So if you're wondering, mm, I guess Batman has about ten fifteen years before he has those respiratory issues that kill him. <laughs> Pretty much, right? Yeah, and you know the city he lives in won't give him any fucking funding for right. healthcare. And Congress, yeah, defunds it until a, until a, a former late night talk show host goes and shames them into doing it. <laughs> uh, there's well, so that guy that he saves, by the way, is actor Scoot McNary mm. from well, Halt, Halt and Catch, Catch Fire. Fire. He's in a bunch of stuff. He's a great actor. He's I really great like in Scoot uh, McNary. Uh, Halt and Catch Fire. Uh, so he's in this, he's got like a beam and he's yelling like I can't feel my legs and like you know Bruce Wayne. Saves him like it's so it's Scoot McNary and you're like, okay, well, he's something later, I guess. Uh, And so we cut 18 months later and I get now we're in Africa. Lois Lane's on a on on, on a story with some sort of warlord guy. She got an interview. It's kind of like the beginning of The Insider. (laughs) It's a little bit of the beginning of The Insider. Just a little bit. Yeah. You know, that investigative journalism uh, thing. And she's just working on this story. And it turns out there's some mercenaries there that aren't working for this warlord. And there's this other photographer guy that's uh, part of the CIA, I guess. Yeah, they, like, break his camera and there's a tracking device. And then he gets shot in the face. Um, (laughs) And it's a whole thing because it's like, you know, uh, of course Superman's going to come and save her. You know, so, like, Superman comes in, takes this dude out. But a bunch of innocent people get killed. And this is a big point of contention for the United States, I guess. This is also, like, a big, like, huh? Maybe this will matter later because a bunch of the security detail for like seemingly the the warlord yeah. turns on some of the people there and starts shooting them. Yeah, they just murder all these people and right. you're like, oh, that's kind of strange. And then, then Superman ends up tackling this dude that has uh, her hostage. The interviewee, I guess, the uh, the warlord right. takes her for a human shield. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't understand how many other people died. Like, oh my god, so many people died in this like thing. That's what doesn't make any sense. It's like like Congress is an, is up in arms about this event that happens, and it's like, why aren't you just pissed off at Superman about all the Metropolis shit from the last movie? That would be the problem. Right? That's what I thought it was going to be because like the trailer is like. Oh, there's a god on Earth and we can't control it and blah blah blah. And I was like, so they're pissed off about that thing from the last movie? No, 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 no. They're totally fine with well, that. No, they're sort of pissed about that. Kind of, <laughs> but they're more pissed about this event in Africa with the warlord. I think it's just the latest thing. You know what I mean? Right. Yeah, he was on he, right. two strikes. Now I'll oh, come on, right. Africa now, too. Yeah. yeah, there's Benghazi. You know, <laughs> which brings us to Holly Hunter, who's uh, uh, how there. <laughs> Senator Finch, who's kind of running, it's like a uh, Democrat from Kentucky, <laughs> <laughs> or a Dixiecrat. <laughs> I'm a junior senator from Kentucky. <laughs> She's running the Superman hearings, I guess, which is something I'd love to go to. <laughs> oh, sure, the Superman hearings. If you couldn't get tickets, that's a transcript worth reading. <laughs> <It's> just, <laughs> just like I guess, like her, that's her thing. She's, I want to legislate Superman. I won't. I won't. 
I want a little oversight to Superman. I want to know what he's doing, how he's doing it, and where's that budget going to come from? Who's going to pay for them capes? <laughs> <laughs> Kentucky's not paying for them capes. Not a cent from Kentucky, Superman. Not one red cent, y'all. <laughs> It'd be great if they could like cut off coverage, and now it's like Superman can't can't operate in Kentucky. <laughs> oh, nice. <laughs> He's just flying up to state lines like, sorry. <laughs> Burn to death, little girl. Sorry. You're in Kentucky. Uh, Metallo runs Kentucky now. Sorry. That's <laughs> it. <laughs> oh, looks like Brainiac just took West Virginia. That's it. States rights. Bye-bye. <laughs> 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 so whatever. I mean, like, so she's... This is when Lex Luthor kind of gets introduced, am I right? Like, yeah, yeah. And we can get into Lex Luthor, oh, and Je- Jesse Eisenberg boy. is just chomping on this scenery. And I really like Jesse Eisenberg. I do too. I think he's a really great actor. I think he's an interesting guy. Yeah. This is just bad. It's, it's just bad. I think the funny thing is the movie kind of needs it. As bad as this movie is, everyone is growling at each other for. Two and a half hours. That's true. Yeah, it's a little bit of a manic presence that does at least like put some ice in the fucking whiskey. But you it's know like what I mean? yeah, but it's like misplaced levity though. You sure. know what I mean? Like because there's no levity in this movie other than him. Like there's a couple jokes here and there I that the, someone an gives. hour in. Like Lois makes a joke about flying coach. I'm like fucking thank God. Yeah, totally. Airline jokes. Yeah, thanks. You stole a bit from Jerry Seinfeld in 1992. <laughs> thanks for putting that in this movie. I mean, you have that. There's a really great bit of Batman going, "Oh shit!" Like, yeah. which, which is a nice one. But that's all like too little, too late. And you got Lex Luthor, who it's like, it's not a Hackman and um, you know Paul Dooley situation. Not Paul Dooley. Um, uh, Otis, who is played by Ned Beatty. Ned Beatty, who's kind of like a Paul Dooley yeah, character sure. actor. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, Ned Beatty. There's, you know, like that's comedy. That's comedy, and that's fine because, like, in those movies, it's a way lighter everything else. Yeah, sure. And this is Jesse Eisenberg, I guess, auditioning to maybe play the Joker someday. But everything else is just like dark and grim and fuck all hopeless. And he's just tap dancing around this movie. And he's just like doing like a culture and societies in the West paper the entire time. <laughs> <laughs> like just reading it out verbatim about like Greek culture and Prometheus and all sorts of gods and who's a god and who's not a god and blah, blah. Like the. Right. The, the the themes on this movie are are worn on everyone's sleeves. Like everyone just talks about what the movie's about all the time. Yeah, it's uh well it's a Zack Snyder movie, so it's not exactly subtle. Uh yeah, but so like he is I mean they don't actually what's annoying is they don't establish him to be like the genius we know Lex Luthor to be. Yeah. And you're right when you said a cultural society in the West paper, because it's kind of just like He's like a college freshman who comes home for winter break. Yeah. So he's got one semester under his belt, and he's just spitting out all this cool shit he learned at right. college. Yeah, college boy now. <laughs> and you're just like, yeah, I get it, dude. We're all fucking impressed you took an intro to philosophy class. And, I mean, his thing is, like, Kryptonite gets introduced in this movie because it's not in the last one. Did I make that up? It is not in the last movie. Okay, so Kryptonite's introduced. We all know what Kryptonite is. Uh, everyone learns what Kryptonite is again, which is fine. It's not. It's I not mean, fine, though. It's people, so not yeah, fine. You're right because people learn in kindergarten these days, right? Or pre-K. Like they sit down the kids. <laughs> it's like, all right. Well, if you ever see a Superman movie, you might need to know this. <laughs> but I was, I was actually thinking about it watching the movie, though. Like kryptonite is a thing that has permeated our culture, right? Yeah, it's, it's like, it's oh my god, Twinkies. That's my kryptonite. You yeah, know what like, I mean? Like, like we use right. it in passing in that way. Yeah, everyone knows what kryptonite is, but. <laughs> I, I, keep kryptonite out of the classrooms, please. <laughs> if you don't mind, I don't want. I don't. My little gar, girl is not going to learn about kryptonite from some preschool teacher. Uh, <laughs> I, I'm working to get that out of the textbooks in in Kentucky. <laughs> Listen, listen, in Kentucky, we're going to learn two things. There ain't no such thing as kryptonite, and slaves were actually just black helpers. <laughs> Evolution's bow hockey, too. <laughs> Oh, oh, big time. You know, I voted for Holly Hunter for our anti-Superman legislature, and then all this all this creationism keeps creeping in. <laughs> Taking the word slave out of a textbook. Superman's not a god. The real god's in the sky. <laughs> There's only one lord, thou god. He's but, up in heaven. <laughs> 
Why is our Holly Hunter? Uh, Super, our Holly Hunter Superman's never been to heaven. <laughs> Don't, don't tell me that. Holly hell. Hunter's a great actress. For some reason, she has a repulsive uh, impression on this show. So apologies to Holly Hunter. And all the Holly Hunter heads out there, too. I know <laughs> I you're listening. I, the Hunter Maniacs. <laughs> Get it right. I mean, it's kind of just... I mean, it's, it's literally Gary Busey. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's all fun. The, here's the thing. is like in this movie, and I think she is a great actress, but in this she movie, it, it really weirdly works for this specific movie because she's playing... <laughs> A senator from Kentucky, and she's doing a weird accent. Yeah, she is doing weird. So she she goes to dinner. Like she meets Lex Luthor once. They find out what kryptonite is, and like he's trying to sell them on getting government access to the spaceship that crash landed from the first movie, Zod's yeah. corpse. And this is part of the first twenty minutes where I'm like, oh, is this kind of a good movie? Because like he, he has a speech about a silver bullet, and like you know we need a silver bullet. Yeah, right? not not to kill Superman, just to keep him in line, so he knows. And I'm like, oh, that's kind of cool. He's kind of like playing both sides a little bit, right? Uh, and as then, you'd expect a well-written Lex Luthor right. to do. And since you said, like, oh, maybe this is a good movie, we act, we went into this, just to reiterate, we were going to do an on-screen episode. Correct. We did not, like, know it would be as bad as it was while we read the reviews, but you heard the rest of the top of the show. <laughs> and we're going to get there, because it's about to happen. So, like, the, she goes to uh, Lex Luthor's house, which is my one of my favorite scenes of the top two. Yeah. The other one is a direct result of this scene. Because she goes there and, like, you know, she's basically telling him, like, hey, we're not going to give you this access or I'm not going to vote for it and blah, blah, blah. She's vetoing it. And she's also, like, throwing it back in his face because she's like, you're not going to get that access that you were asking for because I couldn't trust you as far as I could fucking throw you. And she's like, (laughs) don't tell me that. Don't tell me piss is uh, Granny's peach tea, all right? Because I ain't going to drink it. That's for one goddamn thing. And that's like almost a direct quote. <laughs> <laughs> that was almost a soundbite from the movie. So put that in your back pocket. Also, but- that seems weird because like... He's the way, sex with her a little the bit? The way Eisenberg is playing it is he's kind of trying to get an angle on the situation. <laughs> and I'm like, dude, not in this movie, man. Come on now. You need to help taking my bra off. <laughs> Is this your first time, Lex? <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. Well, you never know. You, you, do, never you know. do never know. I mean, who's this fucking is, a, a Lex Luthor looking Jesse Eisenberg? This is a Zack Snyder joint who did a movie famously that was just a bunch of schoolgirls getting booped off screen, right? Yep. Pretty much, mostly by Oscar Isaac and that fat guy. Look Im- up our Sucker Punch Mentary, oh, nice. a singable commentary track we recorded and sold on the internet. That's <laughs> it's still selling on the internet, still there. So the, the one thing in the first movie that my big bummer was in oh, Man of Steel. In Man of Steel, I was like, yeah. oh man, I, one of the things I don't like about it was there was no Daily Planet and there was no. Because that's a big part of the Superman mythos that I love. It's, it's like the, barely a daily planet. Well, there. yeah, it's there, right? It's there, but you're not spending a lot of time. And it's just kind of like Larry Fishburne yelling at Lois Lane for yeah. a couple scenes. Mm. And that's really all there is. Because then fucking 9-11 happens and everybody's out of the office. And Perry White gave the okay to leave the office building. And we don't, and we don't get Clark Kent. Like, glasses, right. funny, whatever. We kind of don't get Clark Kent in this movie either. Either like no. he's in like three scenes. The one scene that's important is he goes to Lois's house after, uh, or I guess I'm not sure if they're living together. I think they're living together okay. in this movie because at the end of the last movie, like they're together, like they're they're fucking, making out on a pile of corpses. Which they're is what you want. they're tongue kissing <laughs> over the dead. Mm-hmm. Is what's happening. So uh, after Africa, like Lois is taking this. It looks like a really cold bath for some it reason. Does it's a very tepid bath. <laughs> oh, it looked really yeah. cold. <laughs> So she, and a lot of there's a lot of side boob in this in this scene, which is something. It was something, man. I was like, <laughs> okay, like this is in your Superman movie. As we're sitting next to like six year olds, yeah. I thought, uh, <laughs> yeah, I know. I was like, should these kids be here seeing American Hustle? Oh, what? <laughs> so, he comes in and he's like, oh, I was gonna make dinner, and she's like. She starts spouting out about like all the fucking god horse shit that you have to listen to this entire movie. Like, oh, man. what is right? What's not right? And he's like, oh, yeah. And he gets into the bath with her and they start making out. I'm like, oh, they're fucking in this movie. Holy shit, Superman's fucking Lois Lane. Not just fucking, this is tub fucking. <laughs> <laughs> tub thumping. <laughs> yeah. There was a song written about it. Superman will get up again. Don't worry about it. <laughs> 
<laughs> so that's something. And like in yeah. Superman 2, he famously has to give up all of his powers and put the world in jeopardy to fuck. I guess he's able to do it this time. Well, that's, I mean, they don't really address it. It's like, what kind of precautions do we need I know, to take I don't here? Know. Yeah. Is, like, you she... definitely pull an out. <laughs> I think that's without question. Really? Yeah, that's be without too... question. Yeah, okay. For all sorts of reasons that you at home can make up. <laughs> but he I pulls thought... out and destroys six buildings because it's a Zack Snyder <laughs> movie. <laughs> sure. No, sh- oh, oh, here's, oh, here's hold, what it is. Hold on, hold on. I'm just going to finish on this building. <laughs> <laughs> no, Lois Lane wants to get into edging and he gets pissed off and goes and knocks down a bunch of skyscrapers. <laughs> what is edging? It's when like you get like right to the point oh. where you're going to go and then you back off. No. Oh, and then gotcha. you like wait a little oh. while and then you do it again and then you back off. Like, like tantric sex. Yeah. Sort of, yeah. And like so like, sting. like he Desert doesn't want to try it, you know. Yeah, Desert Rose, exactly. <laughs> no, and then like, you know. He gets pissed off because she's into it, but he, you know, he's Superman and he's just got to do it. You know, so he goes and he knocks down a bunch of skyscrapers. Uh, you'd have to. I mean, he's Kryptonian. That's how, that's how they that's how they unwind. It, that's exactly right. Um, so I guess Batman's hunting this. He's hunting the white Portuguese, which is a little <laughs> weird to me. I was like the whole movie. I'm like, white Portuguese, huh? Well, whatever, Batman. <laughs> Search on, Bruce. And he's looking for the white Portuguese. He's also looking for the guy that was in Africa. That It's all kind of connected, I guess. Because Batman knows the score about the thing of uh, kryptonite. Because there's also, like, there's a little bit of kryptonite that Lex Luthor has. But then, like, there's a cutaway scene where these divers find a big hunk of kryptonite. Mm-hmm. So it's, like, the biggest piece of kryptonite that's yet to be found. So, like, Lex Luthor's trying to get his hands on it, but Batman's trying to also get in on it because he knows this is a way... Because also, he hates Superman because of 75 9 Yeah, yeah. So this is a way he can make... He knows... Bruce Wayne knows that he can engineer Kryptonian weapons to destroy stop him or, or at least whatever. stop him or whatever. Yeah. But I guess he slow boats it. The, the white Portuguese... Like, why wouldn't you just put that in a fucking FedEx box? You get it next day. This is... This, it's, it's, it's on this big barge for the whole movie, and Batman's like, oh, the white Portuguese. It's not a man, it's a boat. <laughs> I just like that in, in general. Frank, when Nordberg said, I love you, he wasn't talking, he wasn't saying, I love you, he was talking about the name of a boat. <laughs> R. Yeah, R. Big P- misunderstanding. Yeah. R.I.P. George Kennedy. R.I.P. D. Indeed, George yeah, Kennedy. Now, th- I, when I was watching this movie, you that, were wishing George Kennedy was in it? Not only that. <laughs> Batman. He, Batman. He I also wish, I wish George Kennedy was Batman, and I wish uh, Paul <laughs> Newman was Superman, and they punched like a cool hand Luke. <laughs> <laughs> a bare-shirted punch match? <laughs> what we got here is a failure to communicate. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, yeah, I mean, during the movie, I was just thinking about the naked gun. Yeah, I was. It's a it's a long enough movie you could start thinking about other movies. You're like, oh, that's kind of fun. You could watch the first half hour of this movie, and then leave and go watch another movie. Yeah, and then come back and this movie will still be on. So yeah, because we are longer than Star Wars. Oh, this is by a the, country mile. This is the longest thing I've ever sat through. <laughs> it's, it's two and a half hours, and it's boring. You know, I might forgive this movie more if it wasn't so boring. It's very dull. And they pepper it up the very, very long... Because there, there's so much, like, ins and outs about, like, Lois Lane goes to Washington, D.C. to talk to Harry Lennox about, like, some super-engineered bullet that comes to nothing. Like, the only thing you realize is that Lex Luthor provided these... CIA operatives or whatever. With this, like, military-grade technology or whatever in order to get... Well, yeah, the kryptonite well, on a boat that out, takes a very, very long time. Those military contractors were hired by Lex Luthor, right? And um, they're actually one of one of those gentlemen is uh, one of the bad guys later in the movie. Mm-hmm. Well, that's a bullshit like dropped thing. Is like, yeah, so Lex Luthor engineered like part of his plan to get this kryptonite contract is that he engineered the whole thing so that the world would turn on Superman. Yes. Even he, more so, I guess. He engineers that whole Africa thing. And yeah, right. it's like, what a fucking waste of time, dude. They were already pissed off about 75 9 11. I don't know, though. They did build him a monolith in the middle of Metropolis. This is a statue. Like, you know what, dude? Like, you, you need a tasteful statue after a tragedy. And yep. this is not a tasteful statue yeah. after a tragedy. This ha- he has to be looking sad. This is look, look like he's, wa- he's wagging his dick on the dead in this statue. <laughs> 
<laughs> maybe a tasteful little fucking Superman symbol is fine. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's like he's twenty feet tall and he's like kneeling down and putting his hand down like a, he's trying to get a dog to smell it. He's doing like nude uh, gardening. Like, a, yeah, he looks terrible he's and it's massive. He's trying to get something to smell it. <laughs> I'll tell you that much. And uh, Scoot McNary actually in a wheelchair because uh, he has no legs at this point. This is later in the movie. Uh, rolls up to it, and he starts like... Because I guess he's been fired from Wayne Enterprises. <laughs> I mean, I guess their building is gone, but he's like on hard times. He right. looks almost like a hobo. Mm. Yeah. And, and he like climbs up this statue, and this guy's like, hey, man, don't do that. The, the cop's like, hey, man, don't do that. And he spray paints what you saw in the trailer. He r- writes, false god. Right. Oh, big, dr- big dramatic moment. False god. And CNN reports, because CNN reports everything in this movie. CNN, you also got headline news, though, because I got to look at that pig Nancy Grace. <laughs> you do also get... Uh, you also got to look at that uh, ferret Anderson Goop. <laughs> You do get a little bit of... You got to uh, look at that tired hedgehog wolf blitzer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, Steve. I think we ran out of newscaster insults. Wait, Continue. Is this, we're doing Zootopia today, right? <laughs> <laughs> you got to look at that Fox Soledad O'Brien. <laughs> I think that's all the professional news. No, wait. What's oh, his face dude. is in it? Charlie Rose. She's Charlie an Rose. Aged robo- uh, an aged rabbit. And <laughs> Neil, Neil deGrasse Tyson goes on a fucking like five minute spiel about aliens and Superman. And it's like, I'm just thinking about the 55 minutes on the cutting room floor with that guy. <laughs> I do enough like, is enough, Neil deGrasse Tyson. Holly Hunter yeah. goes on uh, Charlie Rose, and he keeps calling him Super, Superman. It's, it's, got, it's got a fun way of saying Superman. <laughs> Charlie but, Rose has a fun way of doing a lot of things. He sure does. Scoob McNary gets arrested <laughs> for vandalism, uh, right. and they also call it a hate crime, which is kind of amazing. <laughs> well, I mean, Superman's the ultimate minority. Yeah, it's true. Is, but is he Kryptonian... Know, is, is he at all... Is, or he's a... Supp- Superiority, maybe, huh? Mm. Oh. Yeah, maybe liberalism has gone mad. I guess because this, <laughs> well, this is the only time I've ever seen hate crime when I was like, oh, hey. God, this PC culture. <laughs> oh, God damn it. Now we can't even vandalize a fucking Superman statue. What the fuck? <laughs> In my day, we used to break shit over nothing. <laughs> you know, it's fine. If you can't call a fucking alien a gleep club, <laughs> we're all doomed. <laughs> Kryptonian gave me a protected class. One time I tried to fight the hall. <laughs> Bit of fucking electrical cable. <laughs> you can't commit a hate crime about a, over a, a, over a race that can lift a car over the head. That's it. That's that, that's my that's my stop stopping point. Okay. And that is why hate crimes don't exist at all. <laughs> <laughs> that's the end of that argument. Unfortunately, find a guy strong enough. Like, all right, Grandpa. All right, you know you had me with the Superman part again. Like, you start- oh, God damn it, past the gravy. <laughs> you start with anti Kryptonian stuff, and I'm kind of with you, and then you veer off into stay it, stay it, stay grace. <laughs> the beautiful Thanksgiving. So happy to see all of you. And Nick Nolte as Grandpa Sadak. Oh, I got it. Did you stay it? Did you, bro- you block me on Facebook. <laughs> Share a meme about fucking Kryptonians. <laughs> ah, did you hear about Obama? <laughs> they go, Obama's a Kryptonian. <laughs> Obama's from Krypton. <laughs> Obama's from Krypton and Trump's from Venus. <laughs> <laughs> uh, where are so he gets arrested and that's kind of a big thing. Uh, Lex sure. Luthor uh, bails him out of jail and gives him a very special wheelchair. He gives him a Charles Xavier wheelchair, and I'm like, all right, that's pretty nice. And he's like, do you want to do something with your life? And it's like, ooh, wait, where's that going to go? Can we talk about um, Batman's most famous dream? So he's like, he's yeah, like doing sure. whatever. I mean, Clark Kent doesn't do a whole lot in this movie. He's barely in this movie. No, there's not a lot. And of I mean, Clark Kent, Clark Kent well, is Superman. Well, yeah. Well, Clark Kent's supposed to be covering this uh, football story, <laughs> and this is where like the uselessness of Perry White in this movie kicks in because ninety percent of Lawrence Fishburne's dialogue is like, "Hey, Kent, did you get that story about the football team yet?" The football team. People want to read about the football team, and I'm like, you know what? Nobody wants to read about your fucking football team. And, and, and Clark Kent rightfully is like, hey, how about I write a story about that Batman guy or the Gotham Bat? 
Are we really not saying Batman? I, I, someone else can write in. I believe they don't say the word Batman once because it was annoying the piss out of me this entire movie. That's terrible. I, I didn't noticed, even notice. I noticed a lot of the Bat and the Bat of Gotham, and I just assumed someone said Batman. <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't you, though? It's in the fucking title of the movie. Yeah, it would, the titular line. <laughs> Batman. Uh, the, uh, Nick Nolte says that. Batman be Superman, Dawn of Justice! <laughs> Fight! Dawn of Justice. How the justice, dumb is that? Justice does dawn. So um, <laughs> Batman's investigating this Russian guy, and I guess, like, you don't know, like, the screen goes black. Like, he's just looking at a computer screen. The screen goes black. There's a lot of cuts to black in this movie, which is obnoxious. And now, all of a sudden, Batman's in the desert wearing a pretty dope jacket. This is awesome. This it's is a like nice little trench coat. Batman Middle East Avenger. I don't know what this shit is, but it's pretty cool <laughs> and, looking. And, and this is probably the only time we see daylight in the movie. <laughs> yep. Which in, is a, also, in a fucking dream sequence. <laughs> well, it turns out to be. I, who who I knew I, at the start? But also, too hot for a coat, probably. Come on, right? <laughs> Yeah, you're not you're wrong. You're wearing all this body armor. <laughs> yeah, you got the a... body armor. That you're wearing a cowl, too. Like, yeah. your neck can't but breathe as you're it right. is. It did look fantastic. <laughs> it's a dapper coat. really cool. <laughs> uh, you know, that's the thing. Is like, pull these fucking movies back from the 9-11s and just have Batman in a cool coat in another country <laughs> or something. Like, have just a little adventure. Just He's... a little adventure. Batman's dressed like a disguised Ninja Turtle. <laughs> <laughs> and it's pretty cool. Yeah, it's the, pretty cool. The Ninja Turtles go to the movies. Right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. And the police force from Moonwalker are there, essentially. <laughs> yeah, so there's these guys with black uniforms and, like, basically black stormtrooper helmets, for all I know. Yeah. And they got these Superman p- patches on their shoulders. Like, oh, they're, they're armbands. Are oh, they not oh, armbands? Wow. Yeah, they I'm are pretty armbands. Sure. Yeah. This is very... Uh, they're getting at the whole... Um, See, there was a long time ago. Right. Uh, there was a thing called National Socialism. Oh, okay. Oh, sure. Right. And is that uh, what Bernie Sanders is? Uh, yes. Oh, okay. Yeah, Got you so all, far. They were all Jewish and from New York. I heard they're big communists. <laughs> the same thing? Yep. It's the exact same. Continue. And um, <laughs> they, were, they were very bad they guys. They were bad guys. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> Batman, yeah. you don't know what's going on. We're in this other country. We don't know what country we're in. And... Batman goes into like a, doesn't a sh- matter, says Zack Snyder, because it's just something, something Middle East, Bing Bong, whatever. <laughs> so he just kind of goes <laughs> Bing Bong, whatever. <laughs> he goes into a shipping crate and he, he's like, "You got the kryptonite," and they they open the box. <laughs> you got the stuff, and it's like this. Gl- it's like a green glow, and you're like, "Yeah, they got it." But it's actually it's a light bulb, and it's like, "Oh man, it's, it, it was a fucking sting." Oh no, and the guy's like. <laughs> I'm sorry, Bat. And they doesn't say Bat. I'm sorry, the Bat. <laughs> so I'm sorry, Mr. The Bat. <laughs> the Super is better than you. <laughs> and, like, and by that, I mean Joe Pesci at The Super. <laughs> <laughs> ooh, ooh, better movie. <laughs> yeah, oh, big time. <laughs> sure, why not? But there's no cool basketball scene in this movie. <laughs> or any cool hot tubs. There's a hot tub in that, right? Or am I thinking of... I know Coming to America has one, but at the time, we loved hot tubs, especially indoors. There could have been a hot tub in this movie. I would have liked to... I would have... Batman v. Superman settling it in a hot tub. Yeah. Was there any pools in this movie? (laughs) There might have been. At the end, there might be a, a little pool. Yeah, there's a little tiny pool. It's not for recreation, though. Uh-huh. So you're like, oh, oh, this deal went bad in this part of the movie that I don't understand. And then <laughs> all of these Superman troops come in, and Superman shows up, and these B police shows up. I listen. I think these yeah. are some of them Kryptonian gleep glop well, alien let me buzzards. Ask you, okay, now what what these guys are referring to right now? Because I know you're asking yourself, listener. Are what the hell are these guys talking about? <laughs> there are like flying bug people that look like from Attack Watto. of the Clones. Oh, Watto, <laughs> yeah, yeah, a, a bunch, bunch of, of go a bunch of young Wattos. <laughs> ah, Watto, my good man, could you uh, help me kill Superman? Give Please me the need Superman dead. Oh no, 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 no. Uh, I meant Batman. I, 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 I mean can't... the bat. <laughs> I can't afford a Kryptonian, that's for sure. <laughs> ah, I'll just kill them both. But all this stuff happens, and like this is when Batman takes out a gun and starts shooting people in the face. Blam Town, man, you're going to Blam Town in this scene, and like you're, it's so jarring. Like uh, you know, you're bat, you're, you're you're Batman eighty nine. Like he's got guns in the Batmobile. You don't really see people actually die. 
he blows up that factory, but you assume people are gone. Like, throw, and, and I guess in returns, he throws a, some guy, a clown down a well with a grenade a bu- or something. Yeah, and he dies, which is sad. But, like, <laughs> not Batman just fucking, like, Metal Gear soliding people. It's or, just shooting people in yes. the face. In the fucking face in this movie. We, we get to see Batman commit a mass shooting in this movie. <laughs> and it's like, you think, like, this movie's modeling itself after the Frank Miller Dark Knight Returns, sure. blah, 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 right? Mm-hmm. Isn't... Now, Steve, correct me if I'm wrong. Isn't that the book where Batman breaks the gun? Yeah, and he's a, like, this is the weapon of the enemy, all that shit. It's kind of what Batman's all about. Totally. I mean, take a life if you have to. But, like, <laughs> he doesn't use guns in that way. And all this stuff happens, and you're like, wait, what, what, what? And Batman's got this cool jacket. I think he takes it's it off at this point, which like is a, a little disappointing. <laughs> I, I think it's like a... I guess what they're getting at is it's a post-apocalyptic world wherein Superman is the like a fascist leader. Right, yeah. It's like, what would happen and if Superman decided to be a super dick? And right. Then, and then Superman like ties him up uh, uh, lethal weapon style. Uh, <laughs> arms hang, it's suspended. Dude, he, I was going to say Homeland Season 3. <laughs> and I know this is uh, very much against the characters, but I kind of like this scene, this one particular part, because he wa- Superman walks into this like shed they got Batman tied up in, <laughs> and he just looks at the guys around him and just incinerates them with his eyes. Yeah, yeah. And I feel like this is where we all heard rumors, not rumors, oh, but damn. news about the R-rated cut coming to Blu-ray. It's badass. You're seeing these people fall in half. <laughs> you yeah, better be, because what the fuck else is going to be rated R other than all this gunplay in this movie? It's and this is, he badass. Mortal Kombat rips uh, Batman's heart out in this scene. Yeah, but that's... <laughs> <laughs> he really does. Finish now, him. Now, I'm confused, or maybe I'm not confused, but I'm trying to remember because... You're probably confused. Well, yeah. Well, because we were sitting in the theater like... Is this a dream? What the fuck? Superman like punches him in the back of the head, right? Yeah. Is yeah. That well, well, some something punches him in the back of the head. Oh, right, it's a gleep glob. It's, it's one a of his bug glob. people <laughs> punches him, and then it cuts to black. And, and that's when he wakes up tied up. And then Superman takes off his cowl. Oh, yeah. that's right. See, because here's the thing. Like, spoiler alert: it's a dream sequence. Yeah. Okay, but like. He gets punched in the back of the head, and it cuts to black, and I'm like, See, okay, it's a dream also- sequence. But then it, he comes to, exactly. tied up in this chair, and I'm like, is what? this a fucking reality or How not? How can you be knocked out of a consciousness and wake up within the same dream? Dude, Inception, he just went down a level. <laughs> he went deeper into that shit. Nolan <laughs> America was just producer. went down a level with this fucking movie. <laughs> but the thing is, like, okay, so the cowl comes off. And Superman, I don't know, insults him or something. Well, no, he says, like, oh, you took the one thing. She was my everything, and you took her away from me. Right. Insinuating Lois Lane. And I'm like, like what ba- the fuck's happening? So Batman, I guess, <laughs> killed Lois Lane sometime after the Third World War. <laughs> yeah, gang <laughs> retaliation. He probably executed her in town square. Yeah, probably <laughs> chopped her head off and threw it down the stairwell. But anyway. <laughs> but anyway. <laughs> so it's like, boom. Bruce Wayne wakes up at the desk, or does he? Then a, a then rift. Freddy Krueger comes in. <laughs> I think so. A rift in reality happens, and a guy that I assume we didn't all see it this the same way. I think it's the Flash comes out, and he's like, "Bruce, you got to help us. He's the one. He's the reason this happens. You got to stop him. You got to." I'm like, and he mentions what? like the key being Lois Lane again. I guess insinuating that this fascist future under Superman, is that right? I guess so. See, you guys thought it was the Flash. I thought it was a, literally a random time traveler. <laughs> Just like some random guy's like, oh, no, oh, the future sucks. I got to go tell Batman. Well, here's the thing. I didn't. I didn't recognize it because it just looks like garbage. Yeah, it looks really shitty. And it's just someone screaming, and I didn't have no idea. And I think, like, okay, maybe the thing is, like, this is something that might happen in those Justice League movies. We'll get into why that might be, yeah. I think. But let's remember yeah. the scene when we talk about the end of the movie. I mean, incomprehensible screaming from a character showing up out, out of nowhere. I, I thought I, I thought I wandered into my big fat Greek wedding too. <laughs> I know, because they weren't fucking drinking Windex or whatever the shit they're doing in that movie. <laughs> and then he, then, then he wakes up, and I'm like, well, now what the fuck's even going on? And the, the weird thing about this scene is it happens, it's like six minutes long, a lot of murder happens, there's bug people, and it's mm-hmm. never discussed again. No, it's never brought up. He, 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 Batman never even was like, I had a dream where you were, I was wearing a cool coat. I got to buy a <laughs> coat like that. Or if he's like, <laughs> hey, Alfred, I got to talk to you. I've been having some weird things happen to me. Because <laughs> this is the second time Batman has some sort of weird fantasy thing happen. 
And it's out of nowhere, and it's never even acknowledged. It's totally inconsequential and baffling, and like takes you right out of this movie. So this whole thing is like because Batman is he falls asleep while trying to decrypt this uh, bit of information he stole from Lex Luthor. Yeah, and what he I think opens up. Yes, I am remembering this right. It's a file that Lex Luthor has. On all these people that will become part of the Justice League. It's a Dropbox file, in case you're wondering. Yes. So, Batman spends an entire weird nightmare fantasy sequence decrypting a Dropbox folder. And what's awesome is he falls asleep at 2% and he wakes up right at 99% as this thing's finishing. And this folder opens and it's like, it's four folders. And it's a big old WW for Wonder Woman. You got a nice aquatic looking a for aquaman you've got the fucking flash lightning bolt and then cyborg which is a person i've never heard of you will though well yeah no we we even see it later on in the movie but like I, wait wait a second i'm sorry the universe that this movie's in lex luther's naming all these people <laughs> lex, lex luther decided on wonder woman what he's got a great art department that's for sure like i, I mean, mean these this... logos look like they could be on mlb licensed baseball cap <laughs> if you were gonna call him the flash <laughs> you know they will be oh sure if you're gonna call him the flash why would you just be like oh let me design him a really cool lightning bolt here <laughs> i think this racing stripe's pretty well, sharp maybe. like whatever <laughs> Maybe um, he named him Lightning Bolt. <laughs> the, the, the Lightning and then Bolt. Everyone else calls him the Flash, and they're like, "Yeah, you're Lightning Bolt to me." So I'm going to put that next to the Flash. Oh, and the, and the W st- just stands for woman. I guess <laughs> it's yeah. It's a it's a woman woman. No, it's two W's. Oh, is it? yeah, that's right. It's it a W W. It's the Wonder Woman symbol, practically. And, and it it is. Yeah. is. Yeah. C yeah, and then C for Cyborg, and there's that. Oh, and then Aquaman. Yeah, Aquaman is the A, and there's just these folders, and like the first one he opens is a folder. For Wonder Woman, and he stumbles across this photo. It looks like the photo you would get at Disney World uh, if you wanted to look like you were in the Old West for a day. Like that, it really does the sepia tone. You put a fun hat on. You what get the I kids think it together. actually is, though, is like Wonder Woman like doing something in the Armenian genocide. Like I don't, I really don't know what's going <laughs> That's on. It's the same neck of the woods out there, yeah. <laughs> and it's like her, and I guess I didn't notice this, but it's Chris Pine. Yeah, yeah. and I guess that's the you know the Wonder Woman movie is going to be that. Which what is, yeah, Cool. That's fine. That's fine. You're, you're just you know you're throwing you're throwing a lob for the next movie to catch. I'm fine with that. That's the world we live in. That's the only one that they do in this movie that's actually like fine well, this, and subtle. This is kind of the problem with this movie is it only really exists to set up the cinematic. Universe. Oh, big time! Oh, big time! And it's like so obvious. It's disgusting. It's yeah. inc- <laughs> it's an incredibly <laughs> cynical movie crazy, through yeah. and through. And I'm not crazy about all those Marvel movies, but at least they took the time to be like, all right, we're going to do a. What they should have done is done a Superman movie, done a Batman movie, and then do on this standalone. And yeah. then, no, how about don't do this and just <laughs> just do the Justice League. We'll also never make this movie. Um. Yeah, and then just do the Justice League and Wonder Woman and all Aquaman, all this. You know, like there's no reason I gotta see. Oh, what would happen if Batman punched Superman? <laughs> that's I mean that's what does anyone care? No, and that's what. 80% of this movie is, and it's like Batman being a real shit and Superman being a real shit. Superman's, Superman's a, a bigger asshole in this movie than he is in the last movie, and he's a huge, <laughs> flaming asshole in that movie. Who am I supposed to like? If it was too, like, sometimes Batman and Superman, sometimes mommy and daddy fight. That's fine. <laughs> sure. But, like, you, they have to be likable beforehand yeah. and afterwards, and they're not. The this only- is the first time we're meeting Ben Affleck's Batman, and yeah. he's, like, kind of just a jerk. Mm-hmm. The only character I liked in this movie was Jeremy Irons. Yeah. Yeah, Alfred. Because he's not doing anything to piss you off. He's yeah, just no. trying to help the cause. He's mostly telling telling everyone to stop being such assholes. <laughs> Actually, he's, here's the he's thing. Like, he's really like, you want to think this through, Bruce? He's like, I got to kill that son of a bitch. He's like, really? <laughs> really? My family legacy is to kill that son of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> I also, though, I don't think Gal Gadot as Wonder Gallagher? Woman. Gallagher? No, not Gallagher. Gal Gadot. <laughs> Look out, watermelons. Oh, hey there. I could do it. I could be Wonder Woman, Mark. I could do what Wonder Woman does, Mark. Aw, oh, come on, Gallagher. <laughs> oh, my God. Gallagher's walking out. <laughs> I would love to now, see Gallagher. Now, welcome pl- to the island of Themyscira. I'm Wonder Woman. <laughs> I'm going to take this big old watermelon and throw it at your stupid head. Now, this watermelon represents male-dominated society. Smash. 
going to get my lasso out and oh, just throw oh. you across the moon with it. I wonder what the next watermelon's going to represent. <laughs> <laughs> and the one after that. And the one after that. I got a whole cart full of watermelons and they represent all sorts of stuff. What I other? could do it, Mark. Does he waste any more food or is it just watermelons? <laughs> No, but Gal Gadot, I think, is actually pretty awesome in this movie. And when, <laughs> for the fucking pubes length of time she gets to be Wonder Woman in yeah. this movie, it's awesome. The for the what? first <laughs> pubes length, very what? short. Did so I they... <laughs> go to the bathroom for that part? Or... <laughs> but for the other part of the movie, she's kind of just being Catwoman a little bit, right? Like, yes, she steals stuff from Bruce Wayne, true. and they have this kind of like very. Bruce Wayne and Catwoman conversation. You're right. Where they talk about whatever, like about it's being like a we're, thief. We're talking about whatever, but we should be fucking. I yeah, mean, we yeah. should probably I, be I fucking. Bet, we I might bet, be fucking. I bet Catwoman's long dead, right? <laughs> In this universe, she'd have yeah. to be. <laughs> I mean, he's been doing this for twenty years. Well, like, that's that's an interesting oh, Master thing, Master Bruce. Remember when <laughs> Catwoman tried to do a jewel heist in this post nine eleven era, and they just murdered her. <laughs> That's why you don't have just good old fashioned jewel heists anymore. You can't just heist some jewels anymore, <laughs> Master Wayne. You'll get murdered for it. <laughs> the stakes are high. Well, it's a weird thing. I don't think anyone but Batman and Alfred live in Gotham City anymore. <laughs> That's very true. It's yeah. weird because, like, the only time uh, we're in we're in Gotham very little in this movie, yeah. and whenever you are there, it's kind of just like. A bunch of abandoned streets and like, I mean, it looks like, you know, just some like dead uh, post-apocalyptic city. It's yeah. like the apocalypse didn't come mm -hmm. all the way across the bay and hit Metropolis. <laughs> Turns out the everyone in Gotham was a criminal and Batman got them all. So there's no <laughs> one that lives there anymore. He branded them in his weird, uh, his weird oh, right. his prison system and now they're all dead. Yeah, he, he simultaneously murders them in prison like Walter White. <laughs> Well, it's a weird, like, I, I'm very fascinated by the state of the Batman universe in this movie, because as you noticed, Steve, I, I thought it was a Batman suit, but in the movie, there's a Robin suit with a Joker taunt spray painted on yep. it, you know, so indicating it's like a post-death in the family, whatever. Which is cool, and I, that's a story that I'd like, like, I, I, I kind of want to hear them talk about that shit, though, like, oh, Master Wayne, that time when the Joker, blah, blah, blah. Well, it's weird, because I feel like they don't want to do too much Batman stuff in here, because they haven't figured it out yet, so they're sure, just kind of yeah. just, they're like, oh, uh, we'll just, we'll just throw that ball up, someone will catch it. I mean, because that doesn't even insinuate that, like, he's defeated the Joker necessarily. Yeah, or that even Robin existed or he's dead, or maybe that's I mean, just an outfit he wore once, and then maybe maybe he vandalized that outfit. <laughs> I have your laundry, and I'm spray painting it! I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to put this in a glass case so this never happens again. <laughs> I want my, my uniforms to be vandalized like that. I'm just I, sick of it. I want that, I want that movie, I guess prequel movie, where Joker where, laundromat vandal? Yes, and he also <laughs> beats Robin to death with a tire iron or whatever the fuck. Sure, why the hell not? And then he go he goes and addresses the UN. Yeah, fuck as, it, as, as the movie. ambassador for Iran. <laughs> so things are simmering for a bit here, right? And then uh Superman's gonna speak speaking of, speak, talking to Talking about speaking about in front of the UN, right? Uh, Superman goes to he's Holly Hunter's like, oh, thank God, Superman's coming in to, to shed a few things straight. Thank, I appreciate your candor, Superman. I appreciate <laughs> you being here. It's not that though, and it should be, man. Like, well, welcome to the hot seat. Yeah, he walks in, and she's like, well, look who decided to fucking show up. And you're just like, oh, come on. Well, Lex Luthor addresses her before she goes in, and right. he's like, oh, hey, sure. uh, you know. I'm gonna go in there and I'm gonna I'm gonna torpedo you. I'm gonna be the the star witness and you're gonna be sunk and fuck you. And she's like, right, well, fuck you too. Because he's like trying to. You set couldn't up. have it if you even wanted it. He wants to <laughs> weaponize crypto, kryptonite to right. to potentially stop these. What do you call them? meta meta humans? Meta humans. Yeah. Which which. Which I don't really get because I mean that would only stop Superman. Right? Yeah, right. That's what yeah. I was saying. It's a bit presumptuous to think that Aquaman get taken out with a fucking Krypton, you know, Kryptonite bullet. Right. Yeah, it's sharp enough. <laughs> <laughs> what are Aquaman's weaknesses, Steve? Uh, if Land. he likes, to, if, 
<laughs> I was gonna say if he stays out the water too long, does he just dry up like no, a raisin? He's just a guy. He's not as strong as Superman. Like you could probably you could rip is, Aquaman's head off. If could you I shoot him in the fucking head? Yeah, I mean, like no, <laughs> probably. I don't know. I mean, you know, he might try, but then a wave would come by. If I throw him in a freshwater pond, does he get poisoned because it's not <laughs> ocean water? <laughs> No, I think he could live through that. I actually think in the in some in the in some I read one of the new fifty twos and I think he's just living in a house. <laughs> yeah. Just, oh really? He's just got like a like a log cabin next to the water. I was gonna say I hope it's a beach house. <laughs> yeah. It's close. So he goes in there, uh um, and Scoot McNary has gone up to the senator and he's like, I wanna be your star witness and like he goes on T V and he doesn't Le- have Le- legs. Luther gave him a brand new wheelchair and kind of gave him a, him a nice makeover suit. altogether. Yeah, yeah exactly. he looks less scummy. He's less Lieutenant Dan <laughs> and more like someone that could testify before Congress. And like Batman's watching CNN, like he's doing something in, in, in Wayne Tower and you know, like, as we've all known Batman to do, he's a big fan of CNN. And he's watching it and he's like, oh Hey, isn't that that guy that I've been sending checks to? And he's like, uh, sec- yes, is like underling to get him all the checks. He was, he's like, oh, are, are we sending him a check? It's Greg, like, by the way. Greg. <laughs> Greg! <laughs> Greg! <laughs> that was a project I asked you to do. A very specific project where you have to send him checks every month. Well, it's bullshit because like <laughs> Bruce Wayne's watching the TV and he's like, why is this guy pissed off? Because like, Scoot McNary in an interview on TV says something about like, you know, Wayne Enterprises has abandoned me. And Bruce Wayne's like, fuck that, man. We've been sending him the checks. What's going on? And this guy, Greg, <laughs> is just like, uh, actually, sir, he's been sending them back. And there's like a huge stack of like a year's worth. And Bruce Wayne's like, hey, man, get those. What the fuck are you? Into? What? Are, why am I just hearing about <laughs> this, Greg? And they just they have... <laughs> He had written on them. What was it stuff? Well, like? he's like threatening him. Practice, like, yeah. I don't. You let me down. You're gonna die. Everyone's gonna die. You're yeah. dead to me. You're, Next check. You'll you lose let, everything. You let your family die. Insinuating right. Wayne Enterprises was his right, family. right, but right, right, right. He, it cuts close to heart because of his parents. Right, and he like flips out. It's later revealed that that was. Lex Luthor again. Hey, right. Greg, um, how about this? What, you know, people send us checks back. That's fine. When they write threatening things in red magic marker, why don't you <laughs> stop the meeting and talk about that? <laughs> when I say, hey, anything else to add to this meeting, Greg? That's when you pipe up about the fucking threats I've been getting for months. Sorry, Mr. Wayne. <laughs> no, no. We have that part of the meeting just so anything, that, <laughs> no, anything doesn't fall through the cracks. Am I a bad guy, Greg? <laughs> Am I threatening? Am I a scary guy, Greg? Yes. <laughs> well, guess what? It's about to get a whole lot more frightening. Because, Greg, I'm Batman. Oh, and now oh that you God. know that, you're getting fucking murdered. Because this Batman loves killing people. No, I'm going to brand you. And when you go on the unemployment line, they're going to fucking kill you. <laughs> they're going to eat you alive there, Greg. I don't know why, but they do. Sure wish you told me about those checks now, don't you, Greg? <laughs> So Superman goes in and like Holly Hunter's like, well, thank you, Superman. I I appreciate the time. I'm happy to see you. And he's like, and Superman's like, and he's about to say something and oops, suicide bomb. No, no, no. Wait, I'm sorry. Because this is the best scene in the movie. And let's just take it back a little bit, dude. This is the best part of the movie. She's like, all right, Superman. Now I got a laundry list of stuff to accuse you with. Now let's just get right down to it. Because the thing, uh, <laughs> Superman could, eh, reason being Superman, ah, and you're like, what the fuck? And she's like, you follow her gaze, and she's looking, and there's a mason jar on her desk filled with piss, and it says Granny's Peach Tea, and she's like, because another thing about it, God's on Earth, problem being... <laughs> And then Congress explodes. Well, which, here's, which, by the way, I just realized, wait, is Congress in Metropolis now? I, no, the, they, no, no they, Superman they goes to D.C. Because okay. Lois goes wait, to D.C. D.C. exists? Okay, D.C. DC exists. D.C. does exist in this world. And she reali- she's looking at the jar. The jar of piss. A <laughs> jar of piss is a plot point in a Superman movie. Here's a question. How did he, who got that jar of piss into Congress? Big question. Mm-hmm. Like, oh, uh, oh, this is, this is, this is a, a glass for the Senate. It's a creepy mason jar that smells like piss. Could you please put that in front of her? Yeah, there's no top well, on it, so you can definitely smell that piss. Mm, she is from Kentucky. <laughs> no, I just imagine... Mm, the, like the, I'm the, kidding the, to all our listeners in Kentucky. The, the, the honorable senator next to her is just like, 
is she drinking piss during this meeting? I think we need to stop. I'm gonna, do I have a gavel? Can I use hey, my hey, gavel? Hey, I'm sorry. Am I the only one here who's a doomsday prepper? <laughs> Better get used to that taste now, because when the water supply dries up, you're going to be drinking it, too. <laughs> Just like, I guess that makes sense. Uh, and it's so amazing, because she's like... Looking at the piss, looking at Superman, <laughs> looking at the piss, looking at Superman, looking at the piss, looking at oh no, Lex Luthor's empty chair. Although his uh, his his uh, female assistant shows up. Oh yeah, Steve, you said that this is a character from the comics. Oh uh, well, she's more from the the cartoon Mercy. That's his like chauffeur that like beats the shit out of people. Yeah, uh, so she's there, and then Scoot McNary just lights up <laughs> and. It's kind of hilarious because Superman has this like super disappointed look on his face. <laughs> While everyone, <laughs> everyone around him is burnt to death. <laughs> it's so, it's kind of an awesome shot. It's like everything else is just in flames or already ashes. Slash kind of some of it's covered in piss. <laughs> I guess that piss was flash boiled though. Well, it went right in Holly. That was the last thing she tasted aside from fucking soot. <laughs> Was fucking Jesse Eisenberg's piss. Congratulations and welcome to Superman 2016. Just Superman 2016, we're playing with piss. <laughs> this is what we're doing. And I'm like, like the theater's kind of laughing at it. And we're just like, man. And now, like, Hollywood is just, we're down to piss jokes. Piss jokes in our Superman movie. That's where it's at, everybody. And, like, for some reason, Superman is blamed. They're like, oh, was he in on it or something? Like, oh, Superman sure. blew up Congress. <laughs> I guess. Like, And also, uh, he, he goes to, to Lois Lane, and he's super disappointed in himself. <laughs> and he's like, <laughs> uh, they have this like, little balcony scene, and he's like, I didn't see it, Lois. I didn't see it because I wasn't looking. And I'm like, wait, hold on. How do you not know that there's a... Bo- like, how do you not... Just instinct... I'm I'm fucking X-raying everything every time. You know what I mean? Well, Any room yeah, I go into. Because it's also horseshit because Henry Cavill definitely looks at Scoot McNary in the scene. Yes. So, like, you'd think Superman would look and be like, oh, that crazy guy that spray-painted false god on my monument. <laughs> yeah. uh, oh, he's got a nicer-looking wheelchair. Oh, what's in that wheelchair? Oh, there's an explosive device in there, you know. And also, isn't Superman so fast that, like, even when he hears the boop, boop, right before the explosion, he can get, like, 20 people out? Like, it, or, or, like, just, save like, someone. grab Scoot and toss him into space. Yeah, yeah Some, throw, throw him, throw in, him the in the sun. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's sure. what you're gonna do. Throw, throw that wheelchair in the sun. Like, you, Although you, there is no sun in this movie. <laughs> no, because we, we can't have light in a Zack Snyder movie. I fucking hate how grim this looks. It's disgusting. All of the color correction in this movie, like they just had, they had it saved from the last movie, yeah. and it's like make this movie look like grim shit. And the Superman suit is like a dark, 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 dark blue. Like it's practically black. You, yeah, you, you, yeah. For all intents and purposes, it's black. So now things are like much worse for Superman, and yeah, the the, the world at large has turned on I him. I thought they were no. I thought at this point in the movie. It was going to be a setup to be like, holy sh- Superman blew up Congress. But it's not like they immediately start reporting that Scoot McNary's wheelchair was full of bombs. Right. But it's like, oh, was Superman involved in it too? <laughs> Why Just, would he pay them to do that? Yeah, exactly. Like, and that's the thing that's so dumb because it's like, listen, if Superman wanted those people dead, he can do it. He's got to just fucking fart in that room would be dead. You know what I mean? Like, the dude's got yeah. laser vision. Well, yeah, he's got heat vision times 20 in this movie. Yeah, so it just he burns. could do more damage than Scoot McNary's stupid wheelchair bomb. So kind of cutting towards the end of this movie, Diane sure. Lane gets kidnapped. Because why is she even in this movie but in the first place? Superman yes. goes, Superman goes a-walking. Uh, and this, <laughs> he's like, oh, I gotta go find myself, man. He he's puts on a sensitive... He's down the road. <laughs> he, he puts on that hat. He puts he loads his fucking iPod up with Bob Dylan. You know what I mean? And he just he starts walking the country. To, We've had days like that. He goes to the front door of the Fortress of Solitude and never enters it in this movie. <sighs> Come on! All of a sudden, he's just walking on snow, and I'm like, all right, Fortress of Solitude, mm-hmm. awesome. And then he walks into the ghost of Pa Kent <laughs> or something. <laughs> this is a, It's my second, one of my favorite lines in this movie. It's pa Kent tells the story, he's like, oh, the Lang farm was uh, right next to our farm, and we had to do all this stuff. And like, basically, I, there I was a flood. Know, there was a flood, and, he's the like, whole, and he, he stopped yeah. the flood, 
And the, him and his dad worked all night to block up this flood, and they were considered heroes. And Grandma Kent baked a cake, a hero's cake. And he says, <laughs> as I was eating, he literally says, as I was eating my hero cake, the horses drowned. <laughs> Eating my hero cake. That son of a bitch is eating hero cake. I oh, can't breathe. This movie tries to eat its hero cake. Have its hero cake and eat it too. And oh, totally. the drown as well. Yeah, yeah. They uh, totally let those horses. One, it's drown. a great thing because you imagine like Lana Lang's family fucking <laughs> out of business or dead, which is funny. But also, like, it's what he basically. <laughs> which is funny. <laughs> That's kind of funny. What he basically tells is like Jodie Foster's lamb story. Yeah, because he's like. I just kept thinking about those dead horses. And Superman's like, when did you stop hearing the horses in your nightmares? And he's like, when I met your mother. And I'm like, oh, Dr. Lecter. Oh, the <laughs> lambs, Dr. Lecter. They were just screaming. They were crying, Dr. Lecter. And I was so cold. And I was so scared. Tell me about the horses. <laughs> tell me. Tell me, Jonathan. Tell me all about the horses. What was in the hero cake? Was that human blood? <laughs> <laughs> was it a red velvet hero cake, Jonathan? Uh, Jonathan, you come in here with your stupid suit and your cheap shoes. <laughs> <laughs> oh my mercy! I, I don't even know what the what the, the what the moral of the story is. <laughs> there is shit, no. shit happens. I guess the idea is because they are setting up the shit romance happens. of the romance of uh, uh, Lois and Clark is big in this movie. So I guess the idea is like, oh, if you find the right woman, you don't care about who dies? Question mark. Sure. As long I mean, as you get your hero cake. Just, uh, listen, as long as there is a cake <laughs> delivered at some point and you meet the right lady, it doesn't matter how many horses drown in the process. Come on down to Hannibal Lecter's hero cakes. <laughs> <laughs> the recipe remains top secret. <laughs> Um, so at this point, Lex Luthor kidnaps uh, Diane Lane, who she has some horse shit scene, which she kind of also says, like, either you're the best or you should just probably leave the planet, man. I don't know. It's one of the other. Listen, Clark, I'm getting really tired of having these talks with you. <laughs> also, I had about you... four of them in the last movie. With I don't you. know why he doesn't leave the planet and like scrap the costume, maybe come back. <laughs> yeah. I have a new alias somewhere and don't get into any trouble. You know, just be yourself. Well, he tries to do that in Man of Steel, but it just doesn't work out, man. Oh, yeah. Life found a way. So she gets kidnapped, and so does <laughs> Lois. Lois gets kidnapped by whom again? Uh, that, it's the, that um, dude who looks like the guy the, who played the white and green Power Ranger. <laughs> oh, it's right, the, the the Russian guy, right? Yes. Now the and he was actually the uh, the, the 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 military contractor at in North Africa. Correct. That that that, that stomped out that camera. Yeah, that just started so blowing people away. He's he's like a Luther henchman, basically. Yeah, and yeah. Because this is the Zack Snyder verse. Everything's got to be extreme. So he's, a, he's, he's a totally extreme dude with throat tattoos. Exactly. Um, so they both get kidnapped. Um, uh, and Lex Luthor has a nice little scene with Amy Adams and throws her off a building. Superman saves her. At this point, I guess also... Oh, there's another scene of Batman murdering people. That long car chase where he's blowing up cars left oh, and right. And this right. is not a fantasy scene, ladies and gentlemen. No. This is him just blowing up cars. This is where, like, I'm sorry, but you yeah. see... Human people on the backs of these trucks, like in gun tours, trying to shoot at the Batmobile. Oh, yeah. I mean, big mistake. <laughs> it is a mistake in general, but the fact that Batman just lights them up. Oh, man, they are just getting lit left and right. Because they're, he's trying to get soup, uh, kryptonite because that's what Lex Luthor This is, is the boat finally came in. The fucking white Portuguese finally gets into Gotham Harbor, for Christ's sakes. And Batman's there. He's trying to steal it because he wants the big nug of kryptonite <laughs> right. for himself. He puts a tracker on it. Yeah. this That's another thing. You see, and, man, in better, smarter iterations of Batman, it's like a, I'm throwing a batarang and sure. it's got a detector on it. No, 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 no. In Zack Snyder's Batman, Batman's got a goddamn sniper rifle. And I saw, Steve, I was sitting next to you in the yeah. theater. <laughs> Steve thought there was about to be a fucking Dallas 11 63 <laughs> headshot. I was, I, 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 cause I'd been watching this movie. I'm like, yeah. sure. He's gonna fucking get him. He's gonna shoot this guy, this, this Russian guy in the fucking head and then jerk off about it. <laughs> It's like, no, he needs a sniper rifle to stick a stupid tracker on a van. Whatever, Zack Snyder. But it's crazy. Like, all three of us had that same reaction. Of like, 
Wow, he didn't shoot him. <laughs> yeah, no. No, like, Batman, don't we're do watching, it. We're watching a Band of Gotham movie, <laughs> and we have to have that reaction to something? It's outrageous. I mean, this whole movie's outrageous. So Batman gets the kryptonite after a long series of misadventures, weaponizes it, and starts doing a lot of CrossFit, which is fun. Uh, oh, this is this is Ben Affleck hitting a tire with a sledgehammer. Yeah, and and like just you know doing all sorts of fun. Which yeah, you get pull to ups. see his beautiful physique. Oh yeah, I man. mean Jesus I mean, he Christ, he do. looks fantastic. Him and Henry Cavill both look fantastic. Why aren't they making it. out in this movie? <sighs> I was God, wondering I, at the whole two and a half I hours. Would like that. But <laughs> There's a it, fantasy sequence, Zack Snyder. <laughs> that would be great. Yeah. Like the Flash is like, <laughs> oh no, they're making out. <laughs> <laughs> I came back through time to tell you you got to make out with Superman to save the future. I do think it's kind of cool that Ben Affleck is like a bigger dude yeah, he's Batman. A, he's a gruff Batman. He's not a slim Batman. Yeah. No, he's a Batman that's seen it all. So he's got he gets in his Frank Miller stupid knight costume which looks like shit in the scene. Oh, this big Batman suit of armor thing. Yeah, oh, and he's Jesus. like, "All right, here we go. I'm going to fucking kill that guy. I'm Batman." <laughs> Get this ready to thing. kill. And this super- outfit looks so stupid. It does. And it looks even stupider as the fight goes on. He looks like in, um, uh, what was it, uh, A Christmas Story where the little brother gets put into the, the snow suit and the snow <laughs> jacket and wrapped up. Yeah, it's not. He's for- about as he, agile. He doesn't look like he can move. He looks like he's about to fall over in the snow and that's it. Yeah. And um, uh, Lex Luthor throws Lois Lane off, off the building. Right. Superman catches her because I guess he can always hear. He's always tuning in. He can't see a fucking bomb in a building that he's in, but anytime Amy Adams fucking farts, he comes to run in. <laughs> anytime. Anytime. Yeah. So, yeah, so then he, he saves breaks it. down the bathroom door. Are you okay? <laughs> I, was just, I was having a loud shit. It's fine. <laughs> loud. You know what, Clark? Shit. I have to be allowed to have diarrhea, okay? <laughs> not anymore. I guess so. You know what, Clark? I'm not the one that took me on a date to Red Lobster. <laughs> Cheddar, cheddar biscuits, biscuits. <laughs> unlimited cheddar biscuits, Clark. <laughs> Whose fucking fault do you think this is, Clark? Now get out of my bathroom and replace that fucking door. <laughs> and replace the other door for when I saw a mouse. <laughs> you dick. My God. Doors aren't cheap. <laughs> no. So, but he saves her and then he flies up and then he, another really long winded Lex Luthor speech about God knows what. God with a capital G knows what. Sure. And um, he lays out, there's like these weird, like, sexualized victim pictures of Diane Lane. Which, like these, with, the, with witch written on her forehead. It's so bizarre. He's like, anyone who, anyone who, who borns a heathen, then she's got to be a witch. And you know, witches have to burn. And you're like, all right, sure. I mean, I, it's just a way to shoehorn her into right. this movie. And, like, and she's got, is, you know, the, the, the teary mascara, the, the gag in the mouth. I'm like, what are we watching? Why do I have to see my cat look why? like that? <laughs> why? <laughs> why does Batman have to fight Superman? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, why? <laughs> but, yeah, no, you're right. I don't need to see my cat get, like, roughed up. Like, Dude, know. it's a scene out of fucking 8 millimeter. I thought James Gandolfini was going to be jerking off on a pile of burning Polaroids. This is also where we get the part of basically the entire trailer of oh the bat the bat the gladiator made match of the century the bat of Gotham oh, versus God. Superman. Man, the fucking pontification in right. this scene. This is where he reveals that he was like working Batman to put him over the edge to get Superman. Sure. And now it's like, okay, now Superman has to go bring me the head of Batman in order for Ma Kent to be released and live. Right. Meanwhile, he's also by this point, recovered the ship of Zod right. uh, and Zod's corpse and Michael Shannon, your best actor of the film, being a corpse. It's <laughs> just a dummy. It's just a Michael Shannon dummy. Yeah, yeah. They, they went to Madame Tussauds, <laughs> <laughs> the Boardwalk Empire section, and grabbed <laughs> fucking Michael uh, Shannon. Well, if we give him a really bad haircut, <laughs> put a go D on him, and yeah. And oh, very importantly, I guess, not really, but like, he fucking like cuts off Zod's fingerprints yeah. and makes a hand thing so he can get control of this ship. And once he gets control of the ship, he puts Zod's corpse in a regeneration pool. And whatever, this is how he makes Doomsday. In right. That movie. He, he, he also he, he cuts his own uh, uh, hand and yep. puts the blood on his on Zod's face. And it's like the the ship is like. Do you really want to do that, Davey? <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> it's like the the Krypton Council uh, is against abominations, Davy. Yeah. <laughs> he's like, and then Lex Luthor's all like, "Well, where's the uh, Council today? Well, they're dead, Davy." And he's like, "Well, and then proceed." <laughs> you got it," says the computer. <laughs> it's One so monster funny. coming up. It's so funny because the the computer is like, "Well, the the Council, pre- you know, prevents this from happening," and he's like, "Oh yeah, computer." And where's the council right now? Well, they're dead. Well, what do you think I want you to do, computer? But why make an un- why why make an uncontrollable monster? Yep. When you can just maybe bring Zod back and talk to him and, and yeah. Ra- yeah, reason with him. I brought you back to life, dude. We're kind of cool, right? We both hate Superman. Yeah. No, I mean, and let's just get into it. This doomsday looks like garbage. He looks, I mean, it's very Peter Jackson orc esque. Sure. You know, this reminded me of, um, I think it was aliens four. Yeah. Where that, oh, like, resurrection. Yeah. Where there's, where's that, 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 there's that weird, like baby man, alien monster. Oh yeah. yeah. The hybrid that happens. Yeah, that gets sucked out the hole. That's such a good scene <laughs> of a not good movie. <laughs> Because it, it's so, so horrific. Uh, He's got, like, sad eyes. Yeah, better movie than this, though. Abs- oh, Ab- Alien Resurrection, much better movie. So they, <laughs> so instead of Superman being like, he's like, you only have one hour, Superman, to fucking kill Batman. He's like, okay, I guess I'll use Batman to find my mother as opposed to, I'm Superman, and I can fucking circle the globe six times over and find yeah. where three how fucking you, henchmen. But, like, how can you zero in on, on Amy Adams anytime? Yes. And you can't. Find that, your own mother. Yeah. What a dick. So he winds <laughs> up going to Batman and he starts talking to him. He's like, I, well, they I have need, the big fight. He's like, I need your help. But he, Batman's not here. And oh, right. he's a fucking inhuman monster that just wants to murder him. Correct. And Batman's also, he's, he's made like Krypton bombs, but right. also a Krypton spear. Because he had a Krypton sto- javelin, he, he, I guess. He, he found the white porch. He, yeah, he stole it from the Lex's warehouse, yeah. the kryptonite. In his exercise montage, it's like half exercise. <laughs> And half, like, he's fashioning all sorts of kryptonite-made weapons. Right. Like gas bombs yeah. and the spear and some bullets and this, that, and the other and thing. And they get into it. And the kryptonite gas bombs make him a little weaker. And he could but now Batman could beat the shit out of him. Right. And it's like, you know, it's so dark in this scene. I can't see shit. The movie's called Batman versus Superman. Yep. Somebody make this look viewable. Yeah. And it just, it looks like shit. All yeah. 20 minutes of it looks two, like garbage. Two big old clumps of turds flying at each other, <laughs> and smashing like, into each other, and it's, I don't know what happened. And they're like swinging, even Batman grabs Superman like, when he's weak by the cape and like swings him around like a fucking rag doll. And I'm like, why don't they just fucking fight? Everyone's getting thrown into buildings, no matter what. Yep. Well, but, this is, they make a very obnoxious point of saying, uh, like, this, it, like, it's in an abandoned area, of right? course. Because, like, Clearly, everyone was pissed off in the last movie about, you know, 75 9-11s. Um, and so Batman's got the upper hand. He's got the javelin in his face. And he starts... Like, again, if Batman were to kill Superman strictly for, like, morality reasons or whatever, which would never happen, he would just stab him in the heart and, like, weep a little bit. But he's, like, cutting... starts to cut his face. He's like, you're going to fucking feel this, you son of a bitch. Yeah. I'm going to cut your face off and then put it on my face. <laughs> Then I'll be Superman. <laughs> then I got Lois Lane. <laughs> he puts his face on. Would you fuck me? <laughs> I'd fuck me. <laughs> Goodbye, Batman. <laughs> I'm crying out for Gotham. And Goodbye, <laughs> Batman. And welcome, everyone, to the stupidest part of the movie. <laughs> And, because, po- and podcast. Uh, and Amy Adams shows up and she's like, you can't kill a Batman! And he's like, why not? <laughs> and like, Superman's like, Martha, you have to save Martha. And Batman's, Martha. Like, Batman's like, what? What'd you say? How'd you know that name, Martha? Did you fucking say Martha? And he's like, why'd you say Martha? Why'd you say Martha? And like, Lois Lane's L- 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 like, that's his mother's name! And it's like, he's like, I'm, I'm so sorry. I, I didn't know you were... You're- you're- your mother's Martha. <laughs> My mother's Martha. I don't want to wait for our lives to be over. <laughs> and this two-hour-long tension is diffused by them having the same mother's name. Yeah. Holy bag of farts, well, Zack Snyder. Well, what are you talking about? Are we Are we brothers? <laughs> Am I an alien? I like aliens now. <laughs> oh, I, I, I didn't know your mother's name was Martha Joker. You can go. <laughs> 
<laughs> hey, I mean, my mother's name is Martha. Anyone who's got a mother named my Martha, that's a that's a fine man. Hey, Martha, free pass. Free pass for sons of Martha. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome. We will not be the Justice League. We'll be the sons of Martha. <laughs> <laughs> the Daily Planet headline. <laughs> Sons of Martha, free pass from superheroes. <laughs> Everyone's like, my mother's Martha. <laughs> Mom, just change your name to Martha. Get over here, Martha Manhunter. <laughs> <laughs> it's so fucking stupid. <laughs> <laughs> because that's he, he's ready to fucking kill Superman. Oh, right? just and kill him dead. And he's, oh, Mar- I didn't know your name. Oh, Martha. Martha, that's my, your, kryptonite, your kryptonite's a rock from your home planet. Mine's just the name Martha. And here is something outright criminal that happens in the movie. <laughs> is We've been sitting in the theater now uh, two hours and 15 minutes, and then we have to get a full fucking flashback of the Wayne family being killed again, down to dialogue, down to slow-mo pearls. <laughs> Oh, man, those pearls are just blapping in my I've face again. I've seen it in seven <laughs> other movies. And in this one already. Yeah, like twice. <laughs> this movie, Martha. and I don't know, I mean, possibly rightfully so, thinks that its audience are the dumbest piles of shit that's ever bought a ticket <laughs> to a movie. Now, now I'm imagining uh, uh, Bruce Wayne just listening to that uh, Tom Waits song, Martha, and just crying. <laughs> That's his ringtone. <laughs> it's been so many years. Master Wayne, your phone's ringing again. <laughs> there was no tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> I love Tom Waits. She sings about Martha. <laughs> Anyone who says that, Martha Mary Mar- Marcy Marlene's my favorite movie. <laughs> oh, no, Martha Stewart. Oh, no, I can't go around in this world. <laughs> I'm a big dumb baby in a big night costume. I'm gonna fight everybody <laughs> unless their mother's name's Martha. Fucking Martha, uh, man! And yeah. like he, he he backs off and he's like, "I'm gonna save your mom." And now we're best friends. Sorry, rest of the movie. <laughs> like, <laughs> and uh, he's like, "You have to go." And she's uh, Lex Luthor has activated the Doomsday whatever. He's like, "You got to go fight Lex Luthor." I'm gonna don't worry. Me, I'm gonna go find your mom. And like he gets in the bat plane, and Jeremy Irons like, "I've already found her, Master Bruce. Don't ask why." And it's like, <laughs> yeah, "All right." Totally. He flies there. Superman flies, and as a scene with Lex Luthor, Doomsday gets unearthed, and he looks He's like a birthed from a sack of jelly. He's like ten feet tall. He's very smooth in the beginning. <sighs> he gets the rocks. Hold on a second. Maybe Doomsday, you learn to walk first, right? <laughs> I mean, you, you just got born. Why are you fighting these people now, Steve? Doomsday. Am I correct in thinking that Doomsday is the thing that kills Superman in the comics? Yeah, the death of Superman was Doomsday. And so, is he, like, talking? Yeah, he's talking a little bit. Because oh, this is say? just growling and rowling in this movie. I kind of miss Doomsday like, had a long white wrestler hair in the, in the comics. Oh, really? Yeah. Wow, we missed out on something. <laughs> totally, man. He could have looked like Kevin Nash. <laughs> Hired Triple H, actually. Oh, yeah. Dude, get John Paul Levesque in this movie, man. I'd prefer him to look like Ric Flair, Major <laughs> Boy. <right? laughs> Woo! <laughs> A Rick, a Rick Flair uh, yeah. playing Doomsday would be fantastic. <laughs> He's a little old for it now. Oh, well, he got a mocap. Yeah, exactly, mocap. So Doomsday gets around and starts beating. Now he's fighting Superman. Sure. It's, 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 it's your Zack Snyder superhero movie where the last 58 minutes are punches. And so this is now we are... Uh, I punch you. <laughs> we're intercutting between this fight scene... And fucking Wonder Woman getting on a Turkish Airlines flight because <laughs> uh, she she's oh this is the big she's part of watching, her fucking, yeah she, it, it, the big part of her in the movie is her watching Anderson Cooper on she's CNN. What, a, another character in this movie is Dude, fucking watching CNN whatever happened to GNN <laughs> yeah <laughs> thank totally. you where is fucking Anthony Michael Hall when you need him Vicky Vale is doing like whatever you know what I mean like sure that's something let's but, pretend we know. Anything about what we're being paid millions of dollars to create. <laughs> Possibly. Uh, she gets an email from Batman. She had an email from Batman? No, Batman. <laughs> from the Bat of God. From Batman. <laughs> Wait. Oh, Pac- man. Pac-Man. That, uh, we didn't stay for the end, end, end. Maybe Pac-Man's yeah, the stinger that's scene. That's true. The, uh, the usher cleaning the theater or whatever told us like, Hey, man, there's nothing at the end. Get the hell out of here. God bless that guy. What a fucking hero. Yeah. Just watching this 20 <laughs> minutes if it credits. turns out there's Pac-Man set up as the next movie's villain. Oh, uh, that's cool. Then this guy's a dick. 
she gets an email from Bat or the Bat of Gotham. We're not, we're not saying Batman in this movie. And she the Bat of Gotham at Batman dot com. He sends her the picture, and he also sends her all these files. And she just kind of scrolls through teasers of the next couple of movies. Pretty like, much test footage. It's ridiculous. You see. Uh, Jason, what's his name? Who's playing Aquaman? Oh yeah, Jason Momoa, and he's just—it's a weird like, uh, uh, like James Cameron investigating the Titanic <laughs> footage, and then like Aquaman swims out and like does like a no pictures please, <laughs> and you're like, all right, and then it's like. The Flash mm-hmm. on convenience store footage. As, and yeah, Ezra Miller is there, like, looking at, like, a oh. carton of milk. Also, he stops, like, a robbery from happening at the convenience store. That's so, a fun little scene. Yeah. And, you know, Aquaman grossly miscast. Because as a blonde man... <laughs> oh, here we I go. I want representation. <laughs> I don't have it. It's true. Was, is, is Aquaman blonde in the oh, comics? Yeah, he's oh, is he really? Big blonde. time. He's, yeah. Big time. Oh, man. Boner jam. And so also, is the Flash, actually. Pretty good swimmer, too. <laughs> Not you though. Um, and then we have this, <laughs> no, not me. and this confused the two of you guys because you're, and this, I think this is confusing a lot of people. Is the cyborg scene right? It kind of goes on. They, they, it's the longest one of these little teasers, and it's like Joe Morton, which woohoo. Uh, there was kind of a woohoo <laughs> from our part of the theater seeing Joe Morton, yeah. uh, and he's just like doing like test on on his son, who's Victor Stone, but think, we don't know that. I, I don't mean, know that. The audience, yeah. the audience has no is, idea. They're just seeing this guy. Steve, like, this is what you believe. <laughs> but once the movie comes out, it probably has nothing to do with the comics. It's probably true. <laughs> so wait, yeah, so I was confused because there's a little, like, oily-looking cube that attaches itself to him or he's, something. Yeah, I mean, like, basically the idea of Cyborg is his, his, he's a young guy uh, who gets into some sort of an accident. Cut uh, down in his prime. Oh, Cut down in his prime. Sure. His father... Is a scientist and creates a cyborg body for him that has cool guns and stuff. Oh, yeah, all right. But in this one, it it, it takes a while. So she's like, "Oh, she's about to leave," and then like, I guess, does the plane go to Themyscira? You think? Like, is that like maybe maybe? Oh, she's Fly just Emirates going home. Yes. <laughs> Fly Emirates goes there. I don't. She just gets off the plane though, and then it's like, oh. Now you're finally going to be Wonder Woman in this movie. Stop being Catwoman and start being Wonder Woman, which she does. Let's just get into it. So like, <laughs> well, actually, guitar let's, noise. Let's well, let's get to Batman's last murder of the movie. He goes. Yeah, in, no, no. He goes into this warehouse where Martha's being held. He's like, oh fuck! He's listening to that Tom Waits song, and he's like, <laughs> on oh, his <laughs> bat earbuds. <laughs> yeah, and he goes in and he beats the shit out of everybody. Like, a, and it's a totally fine Batman takedown scene. There's yeah, some good, good it's punch. actually it's the best Batmaning you get in this movie until he goes into the other room and he finds Martha tied to. And like, here's the thing: you want to burn an old lady alive, dude? Set, <laughs> set a bomb. More and power walk. to you. Man. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Set a bomb, or you get a get a fucking you know do a pull a little uh, reservoir dog I a gas di- can. I disagree. I think the flamethrower was a nice touch. <laughs> you think so? I think it's a bit over. I think, I think pointing a flamethrower in an old woman's face is pretty cool. I mean, like, yeah. I mean, I think I I can get you a cheaper. I can get you a cheaper way to burn an old lady. I'll tell you that much. <laughs> So, but he, I mean, it's important because he's got this, the the wealth of LexCorp. You also, burn an old lady excuse you me, yeah? this guy is just following Luther's orders because he makes the whole witch analogy. Yeah, yeah that's and it's true. like we got a burner. So this dude is just interpreting what his boss you're right, said. You're right. He was just following orders. Um, <laughs> so let him off. He's about to burn her alive. He's pulling a burn, man, uh, and <laughs> about to get a murder beef. <laughs> Batman shows up, and I think he's got one of the bad guy's guns. He grabs it. He's like, let her go, man. And he's like, I'm going to do it. And he goes, I believe you. And shoots his canister, blowing this man to high hell. Oh, yeah. This dude lights up pretty good, man. He swings in there and saves Martha just to talk. Oh, Martha? Are you my mother? <laughs> oh God, it's so that'd be a great creep. Maybe that's in the R-rated cut. Yeah. It's Batman takes her to a diner and he's like, "Tell me I'm a good boy. <laughs> just, just tell me I'm a good boy." <laughs> and then he tries to breastfeed. <laughs> oh my God! I'm just saying he's got parental yeah. issues. Hey Martha, you ever take a vacation to Gotham City, <laughs> circa 1973? <laughs> Did you? Alfred, I found my mother! Alfred! <laughs> oh no, it's another Martha. Oh shit. <laughs> Initiate Martha protocol. 
<laughs> what the fuck ever this movie. And it's some fucking horseshit. Like, there's some line here where, like, he's like, I, I knew I'd save you, Martha. Or, you know, something like that. And Diane Lane's like, I, or no, no, no. He's like, oh, he was going to light you up, Martha. And she's just like, I figured he would. All my son's friends are the same. Yeah. Like, it's not that, but it's some, it's a bullshit right, exchange. Cause it's like, Because like, he's got a cape. Like, I knew you were a friend of my son. Oh, that's what it is. Yeah, yeah. All, all the capes. And it's just like, you, you, you and your failed levity in this movie, <laughs> yeah. Zack Snyder. He's I like, was just trying to kill your son for, I don't know, five months. <laughs> <laughs> oh, actually, no, excuse me, 18 months, right? Because yeah, yeah. there's a... And by the way, why are we getting a, 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 a cut to 18 months later in this movie? How about a year? Yeah. How about a just, year and a half? A little more time needs to be passed. How about two years? Why don't you just make it the fucking length that it's been betwixt the two movies and say three years? Because you know what? Yeah. It doesn't matter. Oh, it does matter. No. <laughs> He's gross. You know that. how long it takes to get a, 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 a meeting with Congress together? Now I'm in Ghost World with Kevin Costner. <laughs> All the ghosts, <laughs> all us ghosts walk the earth. I got piss all over my face. I'm a piss ghost. <laughs> oh, man, you ever seen yellow ghost before? It's a ghost that got pissed on when it died. I'm, I'm running for ghost office. <laughs> <laughs> ghost rights. I'm going to be Congresswoman Ghost. Oh, oh, Holly Hunter and Congresswoman <laughs> Ghost yep. coming this fall to C- CBS. Sign me up. Haunting the halls of the house, man. <laughs> I would love it. That's a great idea. Um, so the end of this movie is one like all three of them get together, and when they start fighting, the fart rock from <laughs> at, it's been all choir noise nonsense, right? Sure. But it's really specifically when Wonder Woman. It's shows Wonder up. Woman. It is it's, Wonder Woman centric guitar her song. farts. It's so, and amazingly, to prove to you, to you all how big of nerds we are, the second that happened, the three of us in the theater are Bill and Ted air guitaring <laughs> at the exact same time. Because it's so stupid. It's so stupid. You know it's so out of what's nowhere. What's great is by the third air guitar, I'm like, this is still happening. <laughs> <laughs> you get a little tired of it, huh? Because, <laughs> because it's, I mean, it's such a joke. It's like the camera's on Wonder Woman and it's like, bee, bee, bee. and then it like cuts to Doomsday and he like takes a shit on a building <laughs> and then it goes back to Wonder Woman and the guitar kicks. It's only, <laughs> it's only when the camera's on Wonder Woman. As so the Superman takes Doomsday into space and the president begrudgingly nukes them both. Which is crazy because <laughs> he called the nuke clear strike right above metropolis yeah Evan, or dc or wherever the fuck we are i can't get geography right i think movie. we're in gotham maybe uh but he flies all the way up and like I, he's like ah that's far enough nuke it and they he nukes them both which it only makes doomsday stronger but does kind of kill superman we get like three shots of zombie superman for a little while it's so weird he's just like he looks like Day of the Dead, man. It's ridiculous. And it, this is, again, straight out of Dark Knight Returns, which apparently is the greatest comic book anyone could ever write, because uh, we're just cribbing it left and right. Yeah. I was going to say it's the greatest comic anyone can ever ruin while turning it into a movie. Uh, yeah. where, where he, he Superman stops a nuclear, is involved in a nuclear blast, and the sun uh, regenerates him pretty much immediately. But just like... Any other old Zack Snyder movie. Uh Like, you've got Superman. We know that Superman is powered by the sun. Sure. You know, and he looks like a zombie, (laughs) and then it's like we come back to... He looks a lot like Thriller. Oh, big time. And it would be great if Vincent Price started narrating this part of the movie. (laughs) Superman. (laughs) Every night, Superman gets (laughs) ghouls and goblins. You know another thing that's great about that time I narrated a Superman movie? <laughs> they gave me a free T-shirt afterwards. <laughs> Didn't make a dime off it, but I got a free T-shirt. <laughs> Anytime old Vince's wardrobe gets an update, I love it. No, but so he's a zombie, and then it's like the sun regenerates him, and it's like because we know how Superman functions, yeah. we know what's going on, but because it's a Zack Snyder movie, we can't possibly cut to a shot of the fucking sun. No. You don't see the sun once in this movie. <sighs> it's crazy. Uh, and then they then they go all join forces and start fighting each other. Batman, at some point, uh, before, like... <laughs> <laughs> he's... 
He leaves the spear and wherever the fu- the spe- the kryptonite spear wherever the fuck they were fighting, and it's up to poor old Lois Lane to fish it out. Well, no, 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 no. Dude, Lois. This is oh, a, oh my god. Oh, oh, oh it's oh. 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 I, 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 I touched a nerve. Uh oh, the podcast's boiling over. Well, this is where Lois Lane, after whatever, after the the after Super- the Martha incident, we'll call <laughs> right, it. Right after <laughs> Superman v Batman occurs, <laughs> colon Martha, she, she's like, I love Superman, and takes the, the spear and hucks it into this basement water. <laughs> I don't, I don't even a, know what a, this fucking. She is. throws it into a flooded basement. Exactly, and then she's like, <laughs> and that's that. <laughs> And then what happens is, like, <laughs> later on in the movie, they're like, oh, that's the only thing that... Uh, hey, hey, Superman, that's the only thing that could kill Doomsday is my spear. <laughs> so, well, hold on, Superman. We sure his mom's name ain't Martha? <laughs> he might be one of us. He might be one of the good guys. <laughs> <laughs> one of the sons of Martha. So... The then sons. Lois Lane is just like, now I gotta go fish it out. <laughs> so she jumps into the water and basically really drowns. She drowns basically. Yeah. And Superman again, he's fighting Doomsday. There's bigger problems here than <laughs> Lois Lane drowning in a basement. But thankfully, you know, you got Wonder Woman who's holding her own. Yep. She's doing the most damage <laughs> to Doomsday. <laughs> She's got a. <laughs> She's we got, are wild stallions. We are sons of Martha. <laughs> He's got, she cuts off Doomsday's hand, which is pretty badass. That was pretty awesome. Right. And her shield can take any of his blasts. It's fun. She's also doing a lot of tendon cuts on his legs. Yeah. Like little critters, man. They love cutting <laughs> tendons. <laughs> So Superman has an, one more scene with Lois and he saves he, her out of that basement water. <laughs> and <laughs> instead, again, Superman, Lo, Wonder Woman can handle this shit. Instead of being like, hey, Wonder Woman, take this javelin and jam it into that gank, this dude. Mm-hmm. He's like, I got to do it, man. So he gra- like, and I guess they, they form this team formation they never could imagine. Like, uh, Wonder Woman finally uses the lasso, lasso's doomsday, uh, Batman uh, gasses him with kryptonite gas, which weakens him, and then Superman dr- drives his javelin right into his heart. Right. And uh, every time Doomsday loses an appendage, he like gets rocks, I guess, or something. So like but he gets like he, s- like horns. He gets horny. <laughs> he did get <laughs> quite horny. Freaking horny, dude. So as as uh, Doomsday's being impaled, he impales Superman in this pretty gross scene. That's, and yeah, that's pretty horny, right? And then we're cutting to the last temptation of Christ because Superman's dead. So, so much harder than the last Pontius movie. Pontius Pilate man. washes his hands of it. <laughs> it's crazy. <laughs> like they're they're kind of on top of a hill. Batman, like the Centurion, removes Superman from the spear, uh, a Doomsday spear, and like the w- two women are there, the mother and the whore. By the, I mean that's like <laughs> yeah, well, honestly, that, no, no, a serious. That's what they're doing. <laughs> But yeah, the, he, he kind of wraps him in his own cape, and Batman like lowers him down, and they're all yeah. It's just a, and there's like crosses in the background. It's the weirdest shot of any movie. It's like uh, not as weird as that weird uh, future sequence that makes no sense. It goes nowhere, but almost as. I mean, I mean, this isn't weird. It's not surprising at all because yeah. that's all the last movie yeah, is. I mean, this is just like. It's the most obvious thing to ever be obvious in the most obvious movie ever made. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like fucking ridiculous, dude. If they replaced Henry Cavill with Willem Dafoe out of nowhere, <laughs> like I wouldn't have blinked. It's just so... Look at this fucking Passion of the Christ. You think uh, Henry Cavill's afraid he's going to get hit by lightning like Jim Caviezel was or whatever? Else <laughs> oh, oh, might be. <laughs> I think or that he's going to they... be on Person of Interest in three years. <laughs> <laughs> He hopes he's on Person yeah. of Interest in three years. I really think, though, that's why they're releasing this movie on Easter weekend. Yeah, <laughs> it's got, yeah you're not right. Not for nothing. You're not wrong. I uh, think the Justice League movie is going to take place three days later. <laughs> oh. Um, so now we will, if, if we're watching a DVD, the chapter would be called The Two Su- Funerals of Superman. Because... <laughs> Uh, clear- Are we still naming chapters on DVDs in 2016? <laughs> yeah, I so. I, I, we better be. <laughs> you know what, Eric? Look into it. Um, that's a project for you. I don't. Want, I don't. When we when we ask for new new business at the end of the meeting, I want to hear about it. <laughs> I don't want that to fall through the fucking cracks, Greg. <laughs> Goddamn twelve fucking checks. Fucking Greg Cisco over here, <laughs> dropping the check ball. Oh boy, that doesn't. That person doesn't exist. <laughs> 
I'll, so I'll figure it out. There's a big public <laughs> funeral for Superman. Uh, a military funeral, by the way. Oh, sure. Oh, right. Yeah. I think DC. Michael Bay might have directed this scene. I'm not entirely <laughs> sure. <laughs> and then you've got like the Smallville funeral mm-hmm. where he, I mean, the differences could not be any more obvious. Superman in, in Arlington, it's like a, it's more of like a, uh, it's an empty coffin. Like yeah, it's yeah. just, it's just for show. It's yeah, a yeah. show funeral. You know what I mean? But it's like this gorgeous black coffin with the S emblem on it. Oh, you could fucking put Spock in that thing, and it would be just. Oh, all right. totally. <laughs> Meanwhile, cut to Smallville. He's literally in a pine box. <laughs> and then, like a uh, Diane Lane, just to fucking twist the knife, is like, "Oh, hey, Lois Lane." Clark, before he died, I guess, ordered your engagement ring off eBay. It's just like gross little... <laughs> uh, this belongs to some dead woman, I guess, but uh, <laughs> yeah, this totally. came in the mail for you. Clark bought it off an estate sale. <laughs> yeah. So now she's, I guess, even... Well, he's dead, but I guess she was to be Mrs. Superman. She could have been Mr. Superman. Now she's just wearing a double dead ring. <laughs> so... They bury him, and then, I mean, again, this is kind of like an inverse almost of Dark Knight Returns, where mm-hmm. Superman buries Batman, but this time Batman's burying Superman, and like he has a conversation with Wonder Woman, and he's like, we should form the Justice League. Like, what the <laughs> fuck are you talking about? <laughs> but there are um, other super people that um, will have to fight one day. And it's and she's I mean, like, what? Because Batman's like being Batman, and he's being like incredibly vague, mm-hmm. and she's like, what the fuck are you talking about, <laughs> Batman? And he's like, "You'll see." <laughs> you know, I'm like, "Come on, man!" Well, because he's like, "We gotta, we gotta find those other ones like us, and we gotta find them." Well, first and of all. <laughs> We're not like you. You're just a rich asshole. <laughs> yeah. You yeah, literally we have no warrior. powers. I yeah. live this shit. She's dude. like, I'm a goddess. You're just a rich, jaded fuck. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm kind of a financial goddess, if you think about it. <laughs> Do I, you have a tower named after you, Wonder I, Woman? I, I, you know, I started very humble. Uh, my father gave me a, a humble $1 million loan, <laughs> and... Uh, Hey, Wonder Woman, have you filed for bankruptcy 12 times? <laughs> Didn't think so. So what do you know? You're very sexy, Wonder Woman. <laughs> and my hands aren't small. <laughs> <laughs> so they're like, okay, we'll make the Justice League. And th- this is worse than Lord of the Rings, the endings of this movie. There's 14 of, of Return them. of the King, you Return mean. of the King, yeah. yeah. Because there's this scene... There's the fucking military funeral scene with the with the the slow motion it's cannons and, and shit. Then, oh my god! And then we get Samwise Gamgee's family. Oh, <laughs> did I need it? Did I need it? Wait, it's be, so we're inter- terrible. We're intercutting Lex Luthor getting a prison haircut for some reason. I think he got lice in the big house. Oh no, that's a problem. <laughs> they just and, shave him clean. And Batman comes in and he's about to brand him, which we all know what that means: death. I guess. Yeah. But and then, then it's a, it's a it's a bullshit. Like he throws the brand. At the wall. Yeah. And it's like, I'll be watching you, blah, blah, blah. And this is where, Steve, you uh, are guessing that they're setting up Dark Side. Yeah, because he's like, uh, Jesse, Eis- yeah, Jesse, uh, Jesse Eisenberg's ra- running off on a rant here. And he goes like, <laughs> you know, we can't put the toothpaste back in the tube. And there's going to be bigger and bigger threats, especially one from the, out, out on high. And we know for sure that he's coming because he heard us. And you can't unring that, you can't unring that bell, he says a million times. You're going to unring my bell. Now, I generally, generally, genuinely don't know <laughs> what dark side is. So can you take me through the cliff notes? Uh, he's a new god. Uh, you ever hear of the new gods? Yeah, I'm one of them. Yeah. <laughs> he lives on Apocalypse. He's kind of just like the devil. Apocalypse? He lives on an X-Men? No, he's, he lives on a planet called Apocalypse. That's a weird name for a planet. Uh, <laughs> Neil deGrasse Tyson better be in this sequel. But the pro- <laughs> <laughs> the kind of the problem is Dar- uh, Doomsday looks a lot like Darkseid. Darkseid oh, is a big. Great. He's a big rock dude. Um, oh, so man. we got a big rock god coming. Yeah, but he's, he's wait, wait. This one actually a talks. rock god. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit! Is Brett Michaels going to be the villain in the next? Oh game? snap! He's going to mocap Darkseid. Hashtag Ow. Brett Michaels for Darkseid. <laughs> Hashtag Wonder Woman guitar. <laughs> That's what the whole nation will be hashtagging. I think DC's going to commission an emoji of a guitar and Wonder Woman. <laughs> That's a sponsored hashtag. 
And yeah, it's like Luther's just kind of, he keeps saying you can't unring the bell over and over again or whatever it is. a little bit of a Batman Forever ending when he's flapping his wings there. Oh, you're totally right. <laughs> but, um, and is that, what is, is that the last scene in the movie? I keep forgetting how this movie actually closes. Oh no, I'm sorry. We cut back to the funeral and Lois is crying and she throws dirt yes. on Superman's fucking grave and spits on it. No, I'm sorry. She just throws <laughs> dirt on his grave respectfully. And... The dirt starts to levitate, and then we end for it's like good. a quarter second, and then right. we cut it's to like black. An, it's like an Inception ending. Like, oh, did the top stop spinning or what? It's like a fucking League of Extraordinary Gentlemen ending. But they spent twenty minutes built not living in the death of Superman, and like everyone's crying, and it's like, how is the world going to go on? And blah blah blah. Yeah, and they make a new memorial <laughs> over the old memorial, which I'm sure will get destroyed in the next movie. You know what though? New memorial, much more sensible <laughs> than the first one. Classier. Yeah, I agree. Yep. It's just a big black S emblem, mm-hmm. and it's a weird like someone is hilariously someone's kind of already vandalized it. <laughs> Because it's a big crowd and there's flowers and blah, blah, blah. And I think it says something like, if you're looking for him, just look all around you. Or <laughs> what in the right. ever-loving fuck are we? He's Superman. <laughs> he's not God. Like, I'm, he's, sorry. I'm sorry. He's not all of us. Yeah, yeah, he's, he's better than all I, of us. He's a fucking alien that is yeah. powered by our sun. I'm I think, sorry. Well, I think they're referring to the ruined hellscape of it <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that has become Earth. Just look at the charred Capitol <laughs> building that smells like hot piss. <laughs> you think that piss over, <laughs> overdoes the smell of charred bodies? I think so. Yeah. I think D- downtown oh. D.C. smells like hot piss. Oh, you know why? Because fucking J- Jesse Eisenberg, because he really wanted to get, Luther wanted to get back at Holly Hunter. So not only did he yeah. piss in a jar and give it to her, but he ate all sorts of asparagus. Like, he <laughs> held it for, a, he drank a lot of beer, and he held it, like, for a long, long, long time. Because that was dark, man. That was, like, fucking knee nigh brown. Oh, it was gnarly. Do you think also he made Scoot McNary drink a 12-pack of Coors Light before he got in there? <laughs> Just fill him right up. Oh, hi, Doomsday. Welcome to Ghost World. <laughs> I'll be your senator. <laughs> Vote for me in the upcoming elections, Doomsday. <laughs> oh, hi, Superman. <laughs> We read again. Now we can finally have that tete-a-tete about what right, what right, what's right and wrong about Superman. Sit down in the afterlife, Superman. We got eternity for me to ask you some questions. <laughs> Doomsday, take some notes. <laughs> Doomsday, you get the minutes. <laughs> <laughs> and my voting constituents are people's dead fathers and mothers. Come on, meet the Waynes. Hey, Martha, come on in. I got some questions for you, too. <laughs> oh, man. You think, oh, man. You Half think, the city walks in. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Everybody. Uh, I wish, isn't it kind of weird that both Doomsday and General Zod are here? <laughs> You're like Eskimo brothers in the afterlife. Oh, weird, because he made you from you. <laughs> Doomsday, are you keeping the minutes? <laughs> I can't read your shorthand, shorthand Doomsday. You gotta, you gotta Doomsday, read. read back the last five minutes. <laughs> Good Lord. I mean, that's that movie, right? I mean, that's like, so Superman's movie. clearly coming back. No one at all. <laughs> yeah. I remember being a little kid watching Superman 4, Quest for Peace, and uh, when uh, a nuclear man beats the shit out of Superman and his cape falls off. I oh, right. bawled like a fucking baby because I was like, oh my God, that's the most trauma I could imagine Superman being in. Sure. In this, when he gets killed, he's got a fucking David Cronenberg like, <laughs> hole in his chest. He's got a chest yeah. vagina. Yes. Right. He's got a Videodrome chest vagina. <laughs> and you know, the funny thing about it is when that happened, I felt nothing. Yeah, of course. You know why? Because you just know it doesn't matter. And Superman's not a good guy in these movies. He's not a guy that I care about. Yeah. But it's, uh, I don't even mean about caring about yeah. him. You're right. But I just mean more like... Oh, it's just... You know what? Chest vaginas in general. <laughs> <laughs> no, I love me a good chest vagina. A good James Woods stomach vagina, too. Why that, the hell not? That is a nice little pouch. No, but I'm just... <laughs> I'm just saying, like, you just know that because of the way these movies go, it doesn't yeah. mean anything. Like, mm-hmm. in Star yeah. Trek Into Darkness, Kirk dies. Yeah, oh, that, that, that's... Listen, I, I fucking burst into tears with the dialogue exchange, because yeah. it just reminded me of Wrath of Khan, and which he, it's oh, supposed that, that's, to. That, that's going to that's gonna bring out the waterworks. But you're just like, 
well, you know, Captain Kirk isn't dead. Yes. Right. The same thing with this. It's like, well, of course fucking Superman isn't dead. What are we doing here? It just wastes time. It's just like an excuse to have a 40-minute funeral sequence. <laughs> uh, they play fucking bagpipes for Superman. That's the fun. <laughs> Which was weird, right? <laughs> yeah. Uh, that-, that, the slow-motion cannons with, like, the slow-mo, like, <laughs> cannon shells falling on the ground. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> That's how long it takes. <laughs> and then they do it like five times. Yep. Uh, would anybody recommend this movie? Uh, no, actually, uh, let me. I, I got a little a dispatch. From right, right, our, right. Yeah. Well, I was doing the formality of a oh, We right, Hate right, Movies right. episode. This is a dispatch from Christopher Columbus. <laughs> no, Chris, Chris Cabin, Chris uh, Cabin. For, foreign correspondent on the We Hate Movies show. None right. of us recommend the movie, by the way. Let's just get that out of the way. No, right? Steve's Eric, read- no. I no, I'm not. But it's okay to like it if you're if that for some reason you do. Sure, yeah. I mean, I think it'll. I think this is one of these movies where f- people go to the theaters might like enjoy their time there, but over the years it will wear on you. And by the way, we the three of us uh, collectively did not like this movie. None of us were given a dime by Marvel. <laughs> Can we cut that shit out, you lunatics? But if Marvel would like to give a dime, yeah. Oh, sure. What the fuck? You but could donate on the on the We Hate Movies on the WHM Podcast uh, website. Yeah. Sure, Kevin Feig kicking a couple of shackles. <laughs> WHMPodcast.com dot com if you'd like to contribute, corporation, <laughs> large corporate. But it's, it, I mean, and like, it's I get. We're begging for a soft reboot here, right? Because they can't; they're too pot committed now. Suicide Squad's coming out. I mean, it's, yep. they can't; they can't stop what's happening now. I feel like they're just going to have to make a better movies going forward. And I hope to God Zack Snyder's not involved because he really hasn't made a good movie before. I mean, maybe he's made an okay movie before. That his only good movie is the Dawn of the Dead remake. Right, yeah, I like and, that movie. And I mean. Watchmen's like a C minus to a D. Exactly. Like yeah. Man, Man of Steel's a C minus to a D. Three hundred's an F. Sucker Punch is less than an F, um, <laughs> if that's possible. And like he doesn't. And this is a this is kind of an F for me. It's a D minus. But this is what's insane, though. Like the train's already left the station. They start filming Justice League in a few weeks. He's set to direct it. The card is oh. was way before the horse. On yeah, this one. Like, Big time. Get rid of get rid of him and get George Miller in there. I remember confused. there was talk of that years ago. They hashtag George Miller for Justice League. They should pause Justice League. Let let you know. Let let Aquaman be Aquaman. Let the Wonder Woman movie go on because exactly. you're already done. Well, that's what's insane is the Wonder Woman movie and Justice League Part One are happening in the same year. Next year, spread that shit out. Just and yeah, let, let's slow down. Get a reaction first. See what your fans like. See totally. what your fans don't like. Which is weird because they had so much time and they clearly rewrote this movie a bunch. That this movie is that much. that this movie is that bad because like they, yeah. they just kept digging in, digging in, and digging in. It's too many cooks, too many cooks. So <laughs> so I'm sorry, I, I interrupted the the, right. the dispatch from so afar. Stephen's going to read an excerpt of Chris Cabin's statement on this film, the full <laughs> diatribe. Now, will... can I get part of the story in though? Is that yeah. I'm at dinner last night. Uh oh, I get a text message middle of dinner, Chris Cabin. All it says is, it's far worse than you could possibly think. <laughs> and you know what? Chris Cabin was right. He was. Yeah. So you got a part of this. Mm-hmm. But Eric, but you said we'll have it where? The, the full the full rant. Yes. We'll be on whmpodcast.tumblr.com. Ooh. Yes, we do indeed have a Tumblr. Mostly just to post episodes, but right. we also sometimes will post supplemental material like interesting tidbits, such as Chris Cabin's Rant of the Superman. Uh, <laughs> this is sort of how he ends it. As bad as movies like X-Men The Last Stand, Green Lantern, and Spider-Man 3 are, their ultimate goal isn't to condemn and shit on the world of man, but rather to expand it, to see some little splinter of hope in the world. I never felt anything like that for a moment of this 150-minute fiasco, which I honestly hope I can get through the rest of my life without seeing again. And I agree with you, Chris. Yep. I'm, this is a one and done. I'm glad yeah. we did this. This is kind of why we did this as an emergency broadcast. Really, exactly right. That's really why. Well, we didn't want to watch this again at no. the end of the year. That's the thing. Like oh, We saw so many people saying, like, oh, geez, fellas, worst of 2016 next January. No, sir. No, ma'am. Because yeah. I don't want to watch this ever again. We're doing it now while it's fresh in our heads, mm-hmm. and that's the end of it. And 
next week we'll have Dungeons and Dragons as Correct. promised. Correct. But maybe this week we'll have Animation Damnation. That was also a request. So request month goes on. Yes, that will be that will be initiated this this week as well. The last the listener requested Animation Damnation on the raccoons. Then we're doing the first episode of that. Yeah, brilliant show. show. <laughs> brilliant show. You know what? The raccoons. Better than Batman v Superman colon Dawn of Justice. Ah, oh, man. And uh, you know what the funny thing is? Uh, I'm so raw from this. I'm going to be thinking about I'm going to be stewing about this movie and stewing about this movie for days. <laughs> mm-hmm. And uh, honestly, you know, if you, if you, li- you know, if you like it, you know, that's your prerogative. And uh, yeah, sorry uh, for uh, shitting on it. Well, if you liked this movie, you probably turned this off a long time. Ago. <laughs> that's true. That's true. I just, you know, I, I just want to show that, you know, we're, we're it's a big tent party, all right? And if you're a new listener, <laughs> there are many other episodes to listen to, and please subscribe to the podcast and stick around. That's very true. That's We Hate Movies on a special emergency broadcast of Batman v Superman calling the Dawn of Justice. If you want to get a hold of us or find out more information about We Hate Movies, check out our website, whmpodcast.com, or find us over at sideshownetwork.tv. Like us on Facebook, facebook.com slash we hate movies, and follow us on Twitter. We are at WHM Podcast. Right into the mailbag. We all hate movies at gmail.com. As Eric said, rate and review the show wherever you get it. We would greatly appreciate it. Next week will be the as promised Dungeons and Dragons to officially wrap up. The our listener request. <laughs> also, our Jeremy Irons a thon. <laughs> yeah, that's very true. The We Hate Movies unit on Jeremy Irons will end next week. <laughs> and there's unit. a quiz after Dungeons and Dragons. <laughs> that's true. So until next week, when it definitely is Dungeons and Dragons this time, I'm Andrew Jupin. Steven Sadak. Eric Siska. Take it easy. Keep it cheesy. Keep it cheesy.